Hello, everybody. We hope you guys had a great weekend. We hope everybody's feeling okay. And I'm just going to say it one time tonight. Today was tax day. If you're an American citizen, today your taxes were due. So hopefully you got them all taken care of or you rang in and you got an extension. Um, but yeah, today is tax day. Oh, God, I hate saying that word. So welcome, everybody, and welcome to Marvelous Mother Tucker's Monday, the two fellows on your screen. I am Jason of Mother Tucker's Antiques, and my co-host is the one, the only, world-renowned Garden Guy Bill. How are you, Bill? You having a good week? I got my taxes done. Okay. All in right. January, Jason. Oh, yeah. Nobody <laughs> likes a bragger. Nobody likes a bragger, Bill. So I have an extension. So I have an extension. So that means I have... I have a little extra time to get all my ducks in a row, but it's there. It's ready. We just have to get it um, signed and in the mail. So, um, man, did we have a fun week last week? I think we had a really good time. If you guys don't know, Amy of Enamor Amy and her mom, Pam, came to visit Pennsylvania. So Bill being so close came on down. So we had a really good time. Did you? You had a good time, didn't you, Bill? I didn't mean to buy so much stuff, but when I got home, when I got home, I'm like, I need to do a video haul here because there's a, Jason, I got some good stuff. You did. You did. I don't know if I have a haul video, but I will at least have a video, which Bill didn't want to be in my video for some reason. So I had to edit him out of it, which I did. I did. I, I wasn't did. camera ready, Jason. <sighs> it takes a lot. It takes a lot for this to happen. If you guys don't know this, Bill has a traveling makeup crew that he pays and they go with him and they they do all the, the things that he wants done. But I sprung it on him. So um, but rest assured, Bill, I did. I edited everything out so you won't have to worry about it. So please, gang, make sure you're subscribed to Bill's channel. We made it really easy for you. We put the link down below along to his Instagram. So watch. I'm taking it. He has a haul video coming out. Please make sure that you are subscribed here to my channel because I will have a shop with me coming out um, that had, there'll be a snippet of Bill at the end, but Amy is in it with her mom too. So as we go live tonight, our official mod and bid ender is the one, the only Karen G. Thank you so much, Karen G. Uh, Kim is at a baseball game. Her grandson invited her to a major league baseball game, so she won't be joining us tonight. So hopefully, Kim, you're having fun. Hope you're having some ballpark dogs because those are my favorite hot dogs, the hot dogs that you get at the ballpark. So, um, And then what we'll do is we're going to say hello to everybody that's here in the chat. Bill's going to explain to us how the sale is going to work, and then we're going to get into it because we have a lot of vintage here for you guys tonight. So, um, And then maybe even beforehand, before we jump into it, maybe we'll tease some things that are coming up this week. So the first person in the chat is the one, the only Willie in the house. If you guys know, uh, we had a vamp sale yesterday and William purchased a um, perfume toilet from uh, Tina. So um, it's fun. It's kitschy. It's unique. So um, you guys can actually go back and watch that on a replay if you want, because we did simulcast on our channel. So Hello, Lisa. It is so good to see you here tonight. How are you? Welcome in, everybody. There she is, Karen G. Please familiarize yourself with that avatar. She's going to be our official mod and bit ender for the evening. As always, Karen, I can't thank you enough, uh, especially for what you do here on my channel, but what you do across the board for the vintage community here on YouTube, above boards, and thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. It's my man. It's Gavin. It is your YouTube DJ. If you guys are not subscribed to Grady Grupo's Vintage Recordings, you guys need to. He has a really fun channel right here on YouTube. He plays music. He plays it on a turntable because it is on vinyl. He turns that vinyl. And he also takes requests. Plus, they spotlight things that they've purchased from people in the community and everything like that. So please give our friend Gavin a follow. You will not be sorry. It's a great channel. There she is. How are you, Karen Kennedy? So good to see you. Hopefully you're doing well. Hopefully you had a great weekend. There she is. There's our friend Bug and Mediocre Arts and Crafts. I just want to take a minute. I just want to take a minute, Bill. Sorry, I don't mean to lag on too much. Bill's already ignored me. He's like, Jason, I'm just going to ignore you. So I was checking out Bug's YouTube channel. She has 800 and some subscribers. If you guys are not subscribed to this channel, please head over and give her a subscription it's a really fun channel. She does some really fun crafts. And I almost binged a couple. I would say not almost. I did binge a few of her 
uh, episodes over the weekend. So please head on over and give Bug a follow. You will not be sorry. It is some fun content. So I don't know. Maybe it'll encourage some more content. So, but please, let's try to get her up to a thousand subscribers. So it could be really easy. So head on over and give her a follow. It's a very, very fun channel. So how are you, Dusty Moose? It's good to see you in here tonight. How are you, Shannon? Welcome in. There is our friend Collectors at Heart. So good to see you. Followed by Philomena. We're spanning at Globe. We got folks checking in from all over this great globe of ours. There's our friend Tracy, Artsy Farty. So good to see you, friend. There's our friend Aunt Kiki. How are you? Hopefully you're doing well. How are you, Sandy? Hopefully you're having a great week. Howdy, folks. It's so good to see you here tonight. There she is, the one, the only, Deborah Williams. How are you? It's so good to see you. See who else is in here with us tonight. Well, there is Linda, my mother. Bill got to finally meet my mother this past week. What did you think? What did you think? I have some ammunition stored on my phone, Jason. Uh, yes, yes. I enjoyed every moment of it. Thank I enjoyed you. every picture of Jason's childhood oh, that oh, she shared with me. I am currently making a poster oh. with all of the pictures that I took from, from <laughs> Linda. It was lovely, lovely. Oh, let the good times roll. This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. Hello, Mom. I love you. How are you, Lisa? It's so good to see you. Welcome into Monday, everybody. There she is, the one and the only Steel Whisper, checking in from the Garden State. It's so good to see you. How are you, Nikki? Hopefully you're doing well. Happy Monday, everybody. There she is, the one and the only Debbie Gutierrez is here with us. How are you, Debbie? It's always a pleasure to see you. Hello, everybody. We have the very lovely Laura checking in. It's good to see you here tonight. Hopefully everybody is well. There she is, the one, the only glowy girl. How are you? It's so good to see you. There is Tina, the other half of Mother Tucker's checking in. Good to see you, Tina. See who else is here with us. Hello, Sherry. How are you? Hopefully you're doing well. Again, I hope everybody had a great weekend. There she is. There's Carol C. Good to see you. There's our friend Tina checking in. Good to see you, Tina. Hope you're doing well. Who else is in here with us tonight? My chat's moving a little weird. How are you, Terry Tucker? Part of the Tucker family checking in. It's so good to see you. Who else is in here with us tonight? I'm getting down there. So guys, please, if you want to, make sure you say hello. There she is. There's our friend Becky. We got two of our friends from Colorado checking in. But first of all, Becky, please make sure you're following her. She has a really fun channel, Vintage Viking Treasure, same exact name. Make sure you follow her, and you could actually go out and see her in person when she does some of her shows. So, Becky, please give her a follow. There's our other friend from Colorado, Chris, my broom closet, thinking of you, friend. Hopefully, you are doing well and everything is okay. There's our friend, Dawn. Good to see you, Dawn. Who else is in here with us tonight? Hello. There's our friend, Brad. How are you, sir? Thank you for checking in with us tonight and hanging out here. Let's see who else is in here. I'm scrolling on down. We'll try to get there. She is. There's our friend Pat Robinson. Always puts a smile on my face. Good to see you. There's Mary Beth, followed by Mary Jo. So good to see you ladies here tonight. Hopefully everyone's well. We hope everybody's in store for a fun sale to hang out with us. Let's see who else is in here. There is Jameen. If it wants to highlight, there it is. That took a moment. It's so good to see you, friend. Welcome, everybody. See who else? Well, there is Beth C. Guys, please make sure you're following her. Same exact name. She is a very active vamp seller. And while I'm on it, if you guys are not over there and subscribe to be a buyer on vamp, please do. It is safe. It's quick. And I'm telling you, there's some great vintage being offered over there. So when you head over to make sure you're following Beth C, make sure you get yourselves in there and get, fill out all that paperwork and get ready so you can be a buyer and score some of that great vintage over there. So let's see who else is here with us tonight. Hello, Terry. So good to see you. And there's our friend Elizabeth. How are you? Checking in from New York, New York. If I was allowed to do it, but I can't because of it being copyrighted, I would definitely be playing some Frank Sinatra right now, Noel. There is our friend Roy. That's not included. And it's funny, Roy, that you stopped in tonight because I actually said this to Tina yesterday. I was watching him while he was selling over on Helen's channel. This fella right here, he actually, Bill, I don't know if you knew this, but he actually was an ISN member about the same time we were over on the old Instagram day. So Roy's been working really hard for a long time. I take it Roy only has 800 and some subscribers. 
let's do some community support here and let's follow him. It's the same exact name. Let's give him a follow and let's give this hardworking fella up to a thousand subscribers. He, I'm going to say it. Some folks are afraid to say it. He deserves it. So let's follow our friend Roy, who is Dust Not Included, who puts out content every Monday and also has live sales. So please, please give him a follow. You will not be sorry. So who else is in here with us tonight? Hello, Karen Lord. Good to see you. Followed by Todd. Antiques for you. It is so good to see you. It's been a long time. We're seeing some friends we haven't seen in a while. Darlene, how are you, Darlene? Good to see you guys, everybody. And we are back down here to Bill. Bill is in our chat. So like I said, with about 100 of you here, please make sure you're subscribed to Bill's channel, another way to show some community support, and make sure you're following him over on Instagram. And if you guys are watching this on the replay, please consider following Mother Tucker's here and over on Instagram. So now we're going to turn it over to Bill. He's going to tell us how the sale is going to work. Then we might promote a few things this week, and then we're going to jump right into it. So take it away, Bill. Okay, I'm going to do my best to do an abbreviated version of this. So I'm going to start out by saying, if you have any questions during the sale, during during our chat, uh, while it's going on this evening, feel free to pop them into the chat. One of our moderators or one of us will answer those questions um, because we know most of you who are here right now already know the game. So the first thing to know about is the chat. Everything that we do tonight is going to happen in the chat. Um, we hope you feel free to participate in the chat. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to say hi to you. Um, and uh, one of the things you just want to know about the chat is it can it can operate in different ways depending on what version of the chat you're in. You want to make sure that your device says you're in live chat all messages. Uh, if you're not, you want to toggle into the all messages option. If you have questions about how to do that, just pop it in the chat. You also want to make sure that you're doing whatever you can do to beat the lag. So you can um, do a couple different things to beat the lag. You can change your playback settings using the little menu item on your device and change your playback speed to two times. Or you could try to close out the sale, come back in, click on the sale, make sure the red line is all the way over to the right. Those are the two best ways that we know about uh, to keep you in time with the sale. Because again, internet speeds uh, differ. Um, if you have questions, as I said, feel free to pop them into the chat using all caps. Uh, we have 18 rounds of items tonight, 15 regular rounds of offer up bid style um, rounds. And then after we do our recap, we will do uh, three quick claim rounds. These are That's just a quick opportunity to grab something, add something to your box if you've already bought something. Um, and we'll explain the rules for the quick claim rounds when we get there. But the first 15 rounds will be offer up. That means we will show you an item or items. We will hold it up on the screen. We'll tell you what the start price is. You can bid on those items in the chat. And after we have a few bids in, if we get any, uh, we'll start a countdown. We'll announce the countdown. We'll count down from 20, 20 second countdown. At the end of that countdown, Karen Gillette, our official bid ender, will type the words bid end into the chat. The highest person who came in before the bid end receives the item. It's as simple as that. However, we make it a little bit more complicated because we know you might be here for a particular item or you might want to get your best opportunity to grab something. So if there's something that you really want and you are an active bidder, you might want to take advantage of our just-in-case option. And a just-in-case bid is the maximum amount you'd be willing to bid on an item. What you would do is you would type in the letters J-I-C with that maximum amount. And if before the bid end, you have the highest just in case, we will bid you up $1 over the next highest bid or the next highest just in case. Again, it's an opportunity to secure your best chance to get an item that you really want. You may not end up paying that maximum amount. You will pay only $1 over the next highest bid. But we do ask that the just in case option be used only during the countdown and only by people who have put in at least one bid before the use of the just in case. It's as simple as that. If you are a successful bidder tonight and you claim an item, we just like to remind you that a bid is a promise to pay um, and that we typically do our invoicing pretty quickly within 24 to 48 hours of invoicing. We, um, we would hope that you would uh, take care of your payment. Um, we both use PayPal to do our invoicing, and it's real simple. Um, you do not need a PayPal account in order to pay through PayPal. We will send you an email. Uh, in that email will be a link. You click on that link, and it will bring you to the PayPal site where you can either log in with your account 
Or if you don't have a PayPal account, you can check out as a guest. And you can even use Venmo as a form of payment through PayPal. So it's really simple. And we use PayPal exclusively because there are both buyer and seller protections that come along with PayPal. We do like to remind you every once in a while, please make sure that your address, your mailing address in PayPal is the mailing address you want your items to come to. I had a couple come back to me this week. Because oh. people's PayPal um, addresses weren't correct. So just make sure your PayPal address is correct. Um, and I think I think that's pretty much it. We need four pieces of information from you in order to bill you in PayPal. You can actually take a screenshot of this if you'd like. We need your YouTube screen name, your real name, your shipping address, and your PayPal email address. Uh, with that information, we will have enough uh, to... Um, to generate an invoice for you. So that's fantastic. And I just want to point out, I see a lot of people who are who are following the friends that Jason mentioned. So thank, thank you so you. much for following, for, for subscribing. It's free for us to subscribe. That's what I always say. But it actually makes a really big difference because you may not know, but until a channel gets to a thousand viewers, there are quite a few options in YouTube that aren't available to them. But yes. once someone hits a thousand viewers, they're actually able to... Um, able to do some extra things that increase the the viewability of their of their uh, channel. So so that's always a big milestone to celebrate. Mm -hmm. So with that, um, Jason and I both use an online shipping service called Pirate Ship, which gets us deep discounts on shipping through the United States Postal Service and UPS. Uh, and we do our best to get you the best shipping rates possible. I will be um, shipping from Northern New Jersey. Uh, we're both East Coasters. Uh, I will be invoicing starting tomorrow through Wednesday and hopefully finishing up Thursday afternoon. It's a crazy work week for me with it being the end of the semester, but I will be doing packing in between meeting with my nursing students. Um, and I, uh, US and Canada only for me and for Jason. We ship to the US and Canada only. How about you, buddy? All right, I ship out of Pennsylvania. Um, I Bill covered everything else. I do offer free pickup. So if you guys are in the central Pennsylvania area or you're coming to the area and you want to pick the item up at my shop, you can do so. My shop is Mother Tucker's Antiques. We're located in Adamstown, Pennsylvania. Just let us know via email and we will invoice you for the item, not the uh, shipping. Once it's paid, then we'll communicate on when and how you want to pick it up at the shop. I have a busy week too. We have a lot of live sales this week. So if you purchase from me tonight, you will have an open box because I do all of my packaging and invoicing on Saturday. So you will not receive anything from me till Saturday. If you guys need something fast tracked or you don't want an open box after tonight's sale, simply email us. I can package it up, get you invoiced and usually ship within 24 hours after you pay that invoice. So um, speaking of some sales coming up, Bill has a really fun sale coming up on Thursday. Maybe he'll tell us about that briefly, but this Wednesday is a one year anniversary for fantastic finds myself and enamor Amy have a lot planned for you guys. We've stepped up our vintage. We've stepped up our kitsch and we have a pretty epic giveaway. So you do not have to purchase anything. Uh, you'll just have to make sure you're attending our sale to be there when we offer up the item. Now, we have such a large giveaway that it may not be able to ship to Canada. So those details will follow. So it may just be open to anyone who is in the sale, but you might have to be a U.S. resident. So those details will go over on Wednesday, but please look for pictures and things to come. There's a lot of things, including Mama Pam's cookies in that box that you could get just for coming and hanging out at the sale and being there when we offer it up. Then we're going to have a vamp sale this week, myself and Tina, 7 p.m. on Thursday night. I cannot combine anything from vamp. So guys, please just always know if you purchase from vamp, we have to ship through vamp. That's how we verify and that's how we get paid. So we can never combine the vamp, but we can give you a credit back if you're overcharged for shipping. Then on Friday, the Valentinas are going to be here on my channel. The boys are in town, so it's going to be a it's going to be a variety sale. We don't know what you'll get. It could just be a variety of vintage, but that'll start at 8 p.m. Eastern here on Mother Tucker's Antiques this Friday with John of Everyday Holiday Displays, Brian of Mid-Century Mister, the one, the only world-renowned garden guy, Bill, and myself. So please watch for all of those promos. And Bill, tell them about what you got going on Thursday. I'm excited. 
Yeah, so my buddy Steph and I, Crazy for Kitsch Vintage over on Instagram, uh, we have a shared love of all things from the 1970s. So uh, we both have very fond memories of one of our favorite kitchen items, Tupperware. So we will be doing our third all Tupperware sale on Thursday at five o'clock over on Instagram. And boy, do I have some good Tupperware. Jason and Amy have um, witnessed my Tupperware purchasing um, trends out in the wild. I'm a little crazy about it. I love it. So if you love Tupperware or you just like to see it, uh, join us on Thursday at five o'clock on Instagram. All right. We're going to quickly say hello to some folks that are jumping in and then we'll get right into it. Here is our friend Soul Nate. How are you, sir? It's so good to see you. Guys, make sure you are following him and Katie Vintage and Vinyl because they have a fun jewelry sale on Saturday night. So please make sure you're following them. You will not be sorry. Hello, Heidi. It's so good to see you. There's our friend's clean look in the house. It's so good to see you. I know I saw a few more hop in. I want to try to say hello to everybody, but if I ever miss you, it's never intentional. It's just because the chat moves quick or I missed it with my eyes. There's our friend Helen, New England Thrifter. Please give her a follow. Same name, same channel. Um, she has lots of fun live sales. You will not be sorry. Please follow her. And I think that's about everybody because we got to get the show on the road because like Bill said, we got a lot of vintage for you guys tonight and we hope you're all here for it. Oh, there is Oh My Vintage. So good to see you. How are you, Dawn? So good to see you guys are hopping in right at that last minute and we got to say hello to you. So let's get this sale started. We're going to start out with Bill then myself and then stick around. We got those three rounds of quick claims. All right. How much, sir? $8, Jason. And when I saw Jason last week, everyone, I think he thought I was a fool because I told him what my theme was going to be tonight. And my theme is three R's. And you, after a few rounds, you may guess what they are. However, yes, Tupperware just did declare bankruptcy. So, yes. so it's, it's time to grab, but we're doing the vintage Tupperware, not the new stuff. Right. But anyway, so I have three R's tonight. It just kind of came together celebrating these three things. The first thing I have is this amazing ceramic rooster letter and key holder, which I think is super, super cool. It is a Japan piece. The Japan sticker did come off today as I was giving it a little clean, um, but it's it's in great condition. No chips, no cracks. There is some paint loss down here on the bottom. Just note that. Oh, it's really, um, it's really focusing nicely. But as you might imagine, roosters are one of my theme for the evening. Roosters were a super popular kind of um, uh, aesthetic look in the 50s and 60s. So we have a lot of pieces in modern day times, vintage pieces that feature roosters. And I thought I think they're really fun. Um, and I have a ton of different rooster pieces if you're interested in some mid-century kind of farmland look or uh, in, in your decor. A lot of fun, fun things. Um, so this is, again, again, a nice ceramic piece. The uh, hooks are glued in from the back. Um, they're nice and kind of sturdy. And it is uh, 7.5 inches tall, six inches from side to side. Nice big space to hold your letters. Nice and clean. Just an overall good condition to give you that sort of farmhouse uh, look if that's what you're looking for. If you guys have like a retro or vintage kitchen, I don't think two things. It's not, well, it's actually three things. It isn't complete without a rooster, plus a letter holder, plus a key hook. That's like a trifecta. That's or like a aprons or other things too, True. you know, right. utensils that have like a little hook on the end of them. Yep. Really, really fun. But as we said, we do have 18 rounds tonight. I'm going to keep my rounds moving along quickly. So if you're interested, throw in a bid. And if you're not, not a big deal. We'll just keep moving. But I do see one bid. So we're looking for nine or more. And I'm going to start that countdown. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. Okay. Jameen What's is going looking, on? What am I missing? No, Jameen is just looking for anything poppy tail. And they did some of the roosters and things too. So, all right. Where is the bid? And Sarah, thank you so much. This is coming to you. Good to see you, Sarah. And I knew Bill was doing roses. So I tried to grab a few things that were Jameen, roses. You told people what my second R is. 
Spoiler alert, I'm doing just roses. So mine's going to start at $12, and now Bill left because he's mad at me. So I have a great piece of German porcelain. It is a trinket box. It is from 1938, and I will explain to you why in a moment. This is a transfer, yet the gold on this is hand-painted. Look at the detail here around the feet. It's all on every single foot. No chips, no, no issues at all. And it's a little trinket box, okay? It's a little porcelain trinket box. But the reason why I know that it's from 1938 is that it is actually Rosenthal made in Germany. Ooh. And I was able to track down that maker's mark. And they actually only used that maker's mark for one year, which was 1938. So this is porcelain, a uh, German porcelain from 1938 prior to the war. So it is hand painted. So in essence, when you see it signed like that, that means that somebody hand painted it. But what they did was some of these other things on here, they're transfers, okay? So like the leaf details, those are little applied things. And then the hand painting actually is the gold that they did. So they can say that it's hand painted, but actually like the rose that's here on the top, let me flip this around here. I kind of like the way it displays this way. The rose is just a transfer. So it was their way of speeding up the process. So it's this gorgeous four-footed little porcelain box. Hello. I think I saw Amy jump in there at one point. She did. I think, how are you, Amy? Good to see you. So the little box measures just about four and a half inches tall, four and a half inches tall by about two and a half inches wide. And look at the great details there on those legs. Great scroll work. Believe it or not, there are no chips. There are no issues at all to the piece. And if you do your research on this porcelain, especially Rosenthal porcelain, $12 is an amazing start price. Um, we were able to source this at a pretty low price. So I was excited to be able to offer it at just $12. I could not find an exact little trinket box like this. Usually they made ones that were way, way larger. So this would be a nice little pill box maybe maybe a great little trinket box just to put there next to your nightstand, maybe even put it in the bathroom. So when you're washing your hands, you know, you could pop your jewelry in it, you know, for overnight or something like that. So Jameen is in at 12. Thank you so much. So we're looking for 13 or more. Again, this piece is from 1938. And that is because I was able to date the Rosenthal Germany maker's mark down on the bottom. Some of that little gold that you see there, those are actually little marks that indicate that there is hand painting involved on this. Hello, Liz. So good to see you. And the hand painting actually means just the gold. All these other parts, like I said, they're transfers. So like Bill said, I'll keep it moving. Let's keep it going. We're in at 12, looking for 13. No issues, no damage. And we are doing just in case if you're an active bidder. So 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. I just can't get over all that great detail. And that's actually raised a little bit. That's like three You dimensions. know how over time you develop new vintage obsessions you didn't have before? Yes. For me, Rosenthal is one of those. Like I look for it all the time now. I love it. And those figurines, if y'all find them, they can be worth, well, those little figurines and depending on the age. Jameen, it's yours. Thank you so much. Okay, so since Jason let the cat out of the bag and my second R is roses, I'm going to bring a rose piece now. I have this awesome piece of tollware. This is a silent butler. I think a lot of you know what silent butlers are, um, but it is gorgeous. Um, it does have some wear, as you can see, because this is this is enamel paint on top of the uh, on top of the metal, um, but it's got a gorgeous rose motif. And uh, sorry, Jason, twenty dollars start bid. All right, if anyone's yeah. interested, it's got a gorgeous yellow rose on it with some other flowers as well. And if you don't know, a silent butler was meant to pick up the crumbs from the table. Um, so you could sweep the, the crumbs into the silent butler in between, um, in between, uh, what do you call them? In between courses. Yes. Um, we actually, Chris and I, we, we go to a fancy restaurant every once in a while and they do this uh -huh. between every course, they sweep up our mess. So what it's done over time is it's made me like eat over the plate so that I don't ever have crumbs anymore. <laughs> so I feel like they're judging me when they do it. Uh -huh. 
But as you can see, there is some wear to it, but overall relatively good condition for toll wear. Oftentimes it gets pretty rusty. There isn't really any rust. There is a little wear around where the handle meets the actual silent butler. And if anyone is interested, this did not come with it, but I'm gonna send a super cute and old little whisk broom with it, which fits perfectly inside. Um, if it's something you actually wanted to use, or it could be a twofer if you have another display to use the little broom in. It's a super cute. Um, super cute little broom. Uh, I can't remember the fiber. I knew before the sale and now I can't remember what the fiber on the broom is, but really, really nice. Yeah, it is a cute whisk broom. I agree. Yes. So the, let me just give you the measurement before I move on. Um, the Tollware Silent Butler is 8.25 inches from top to bottom. And that's the bottom, the top of the handle and 8.5 inches across. And this is about how far you can get it to open. And of course, it could be used for other things today, but I th think it's fun to have um, something that was so utilitarian at the time. Um, and I'm I'm addicted to tollware. I haven't actually brought any to the sale. Jason started bringing some a few weeks ago, um, but I, I I love it. I used to have an entire tray display on a wall. I just love them. So we'll bring this back. Yeah, it is an Ariana piece, isn't it? We'll bring yeah. it back at the recap. Very uh, fancy. Very fancy. All right, guys, hold on here. Let me scroll up. All right, my next item is going to start at $10, okay? Just $10. I could not find the manufacturer of this pottery. I looked all over. I Nobody was able to say if they felt that it was McCoy. They didn't know if it was maybe American Bisque. But it is this fun wall pocket, which is a butterfly, okay? And it's in very good condition. I was able to find a few other ones that are different colors. So you could actually collect them and add a few, you know, different colored ones if you want to. Philomena, I see you in at 10. There are no chips or cracks. There are two deep crazing marks in the back, okay? But they do not go through. Um, and it's very clean on the inside. Now, this is one of these wall pockets that is going to have to be hung. This one does not sit on its own. Now, you could lean it against something if you want to. You could put it in a plate stand if you want to, but it does have the hole on the back. And this is one of those ones that seems to be meant to be hung. So no chips, no cracks, just some crazing. This is all under the glaze. So that's not cold paint. That's all under the glaze. So we had Jameen in at 11. Philomena is in at 12. The dimensions on this are four inches tall by about four inches wide. And again, can I believe this. Can you see the bottom? Can you sure. show the bottom? Yep. I checked a few of my books, but I couldn't find anything. Some folks even thought it may have been early McCoy, but I, I don't know. I have a feeling it might be Robinson Rand's bottom because they did a whole okay. insect. They did a whole insect line. Okay, but I haven't seen a butterfly before, so I don't know. The only other one that I found was a blue one that sold over on eBay. I couldn't find anything else, and this was one of those things where you. You know, you do a Google image. Hello, Kelly. It's so good to see you. You try to do some research, but you just I can't find anything else. The fellow that I bought it from, he thought it was McCoy. That's what he thought. But I don't think it is McCoy. And it is it is the two toned uh, yellow. So it goes yellow to like a chartreuse and then out to the green. And then all of the details are in brown on it. So no chips, no cracks. It measures about four by four. Those are not cracks. Those are just crazy lines that I think got stained because I believe it was used at one time. So let's go ahead and do a countdown. We are doing just in case for active bidders. I love the colors too. Aren't they great? Great for spring. So 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 5, 4. What the heck was that? Uh, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one, bid end buttermilk. You might be lagging a little bit because we are in at 15, looking for 16. I see you're just in case, Kelly. Thank you so much. Hopefully you're hearing me, buttermilk. I think you did because I see you're 18. Thank you guys so much for the bids. Just waiting on that bid end from Karen G. There it is. Thank you so much, Karen G. Right before that bid end, buttermilk and cream. Whoo, she beat the lag. Congratulations, it's coming to you for $26. Thank you so much. All right, Bill. Um, $9 for choice, Jason. And the third R that I'm bringing tonight is Redware. Stands for Redware. And I have some beautiful pieces 
of redware pottery. If you're not familiar with redware pottery, it's just a different sort of clay um, that they're made in three major places in the world. Europe made a bunch. Um, Japan made a bunch and, the, and it was made here in the United States, but it's kind of noted for the red bottoms and then the super high gloss finish. Um, and always sort of in this brown, brown to almost black glaze color. And then usually cold paint applied on the top. And with this dog, for instance, you can see um, it had blue eyes at one point. It's really shiny glaze, as you can see. And at one point, this dog would have had pink on the interior of the of the ears but they have that has since kind of um gone to the wayside just a little bit of water on redware because of this glaze will take the cold paint off but i have two of these um of these uh dogs these redware dogs 6.5 inches tall in great condition no cr no chips no cracks redware if it ever gets damaged usually means you're missing a chunk out of it not just a little bit it doesn't chip it chunks um and these are in both both good condition so i have choice over this little dog which as i said is 6.5 inches tall and there are two of them i also have another dog in redware it's a bit larger at 8.5 inches oh my god I have this I guy him. he is a bank actually so he, he has his uh slot on the back of his hat and still has a Japan sticker. They both have Japan stickers and a stopper in the bottom. And his cold paint's in pretty good condition. You can see cold paint loss in the whites of the eyes, a little bit here on the bow. Um, but that's just, that's the way red wear goes. It, you know, you wash it and the cold paint just kind of flakes off in it. So you got to be super, super careful with it. Yeah, but he's super cool. Um, oh oh yeah, isn't God. that great? It's kind of pink in real life, but it's coming across purple. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, he is a dapper dude. He's a very dapper guy. And he is uh, two inches taller than the other pup. Oh I don't God. know, bulldog or something maybe. I don't know. This is definitely a long-haired dog, though, this one. The redware is so kitschy. Jamine wants to know how tall, yeah. Bill. So the, the bank is 8.5 inches tall, and the smaller pups are 6.5 inches tall. Okay. So oh. that's what they look like together. And you can see this one pup still does have a little bit of pink in his ear that hasn't you know, been washed away. These would make great Father's Day gifts. And Father's Day is not too far away. Like if you have a, a fella that might have like a bar downstairs or maybe a, a little dapper room where maybe he's having a cigar or something, they would look really good in there. Yes. Gosh, I love yeah. it. Okay, I will go ahead and start a countdown. So you're bidding on the large uh, bank or one of the smaller dogs. I don't know what kind of dog. He is so, so angry. He's so unhappy. We're looking for 10 or more. My 20, God. 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bid end. See, and the glaze on these is so good. That's the reflection you're seeing of Bill's light. Yeah. And They're super, light. super, super glazed. Like, such a high glaze. Love these. So there is the bid end. So, Jameen, you have first choice. Maybe Frenchies. What do I know? Um, let me know if you would like the bank or the figurine. <laughs> um, there are two figurines and one bank. Uh, Jameen has first choice, and then if anything, so Jameen's going to take the bank. So Melanie, if you wanted the bank, feel free to pass. If you wanted one or both of the quote-unquote Frenchies, just let me know. And if not, I'll bring them back to the recap. All right, guys, I'll get myself going here. $20. It's been a long time. It's been over a year since I've had a good piece of Victorian custard glass to offer. So $20, and it's starting at this price because there is one little teeny tiny boober down here on the bottom. See if I can even show it to you. Right down here, right there, you can sort of see it at my finger. There's a little chip right there, okay? Also, I believe that all of the detail would have been painted in gold, okay? But that is long since gone. That would have been like a cold paint technique. So if you guys aren't familiar, at the turn of the century, one of the in-style fashion glass to actually produce and to sell and to collect and to use was custard glass. So it has this yellow kind of hue to it, almost like a custard does. And this is a gorgeous compote. 
I'm not sure of the manufacturer. That's the one thing I don't know. Hello, Patty. It's so good to see you. But I do know that this is authentic Victorian turn of the century uh, custard glass. It has that little chippity doodah down there on the bottom. And this is in the Greek key. So the, it's a Greek key border. And then it has just like a beaded swag to it. So let me get in here close so you guys can see all the great detail. So you can sort of see the Greek key right here. And I will show you one of the best parts about custard glass in a moment if you guys don't know so. Then you have the great top here. No damage to the top of the piece. But down here on the bottom, there's just a slight little chip. Just a light little chip right there. It's not even going to show that much on the screen. So it is this gorgeous Victorian footed compote. If you guys are not familiar, what also helps custard glass have its custardy kind of look is the fact that they use uranium. So it does fluoresce under a black light. That's the fun part about this glass. If you guys didn't know so, um, folks collect this to put with their uranium glass. And again, the only condition issues that I can tell you of is the fact Thank you, Darlene. Darlene knew that it glows, is that it's probably missing some of its gold details. So if you're familiar with Goofus Glass, they would have painted all this great scroll work with some gold paint, and that is Greek key in there, and it is long since gone. But it is still a gorgeous piece. I am feeling a little rough spot right here. I don't know if that's a chip. But again, this is older Victorian glass. Again, these are really fun. And look, it even has like a slag going on in there. I actually think that's some flint that got trapped in the manufacturing of it. But you have to remember, this was a full, complete different era. It has these um, panels that come down the bottom, and then it also has the design down here at the bottom. And again, the design is in Greek key, so that's all Greek key if I get it in frame for you guys. And it has this great beaded, beaded scroll is what I think it is. I think that's the name of it. So Again, I'm not sure of the manufacturer. A lot of folks did uh, make this, or there were a few that made it back in the day, and I'm not sure who made it to, to give you guys a definite name. But I'm not seeing any interest. It was $20. If you guys know this custard glass, you know that it is getting hard to find. And I think $20 is a really fun, good price point to start it at the fact that it has the little chip down here on the bottom. I just want to try to find it again for you here. Um, and it could even be a rough spot. But we will bring this back during a recap because I can't find that little chip. But if anyone's interested, $20 on the Victorian custard glass. All right, Bill. Um, $75, Jason. Right. And uh, I just want to point out everything I'm bringing this in this round is cross-listed on VAMP. So if it doesn't sell and you're interested in just one of the pieces, you can go over to VAMP to look for it. They're much more expensive on VAMP, but um, I'm going to bring them out as a set to see if somebody wants to start a collection because I have an amazing opportunity for you to get multiple pieces of the Holt Howard Cock Rouge um, line. This is a line primarily of breakfast kitchen items um, that Holt Howard made in the 19, late 1950s and early 1960s, uh, they did not expect the Red Rooster or the Cock Rouge to be their most popular line. They made a line with apples, and there was a third one too. I think it was fruit or something, but this is the line that everyone bought. Everyone loved it. Mm -hmm. So today, for that price, I'm offering uh, the coffee pot, which actually at one time was able to be plugged in, um, and six additional pieces uh, that you can see here, and I'll show you them individually. I'm gonna show the two pieces first that have tiny condition issues. So there are three coffee mugs, um, and this is what they look like, and they're fantastic. One of the coffee mugs does have a manufacturer flaw. Uh, it's glazed over, but there is a little bit of, there's a little dent in the handle. But other than that, it's in great condition. Uh, other than crazing, crazing is a whole Howard standard. Um, there is an egg cup, a big egg cup in the, in the collection. There is the mini pitcher, which they call the syrup pitcher. Isn't it so cute? I've already I had three of them. Two of them already sold on VAMP. They're super, super cute. The little syrup pitcher. And I have the sugar. And the sugar actually has a little rooster as the handle. It's the sugar that has the, it's it's a big craze line. Uh, I don't feel it on the bottom, but it is there. So you should know that it's there. But other than that, this set is in great condition. So it's a sugar with a lid. 
no issues with the lid. The little rooster on top is super, super cute. It's that little pitcher, syrup pitcher or mini creamer, also in great condition. As I said, the egg cups in this line are huge. They're just big, big egg cups. And then there are three of the mugs. And they, they do have Holt Howard on the bottom. Some of them have remnants of a sticker. I don't know if any of them have a full sticker. Almost, it got worn down. And then there is the big piece. There is the, the coffee pot. And again, it's one of those that's labeled 120 volts, 440 watts. And I did look on Amazon, and I'm not going to say for sure, but it did look like you would be able to find a replacement one that had the round prongs. Like a lot of the TV cords have the round prongs. I'm not going to say for certain, but it did look like they were there. But I didn't test it. I'm not an electrician but it did look like you might be able to find it. And as you can see, the coffee pot is labeled 1962. And that's right in the heart of when Holt Howard was making these ceramics. So good. And yes, some of these, Holt Howard did a good job of not only marking everything with a sticker, but also stamping it. And a lot of the earlier Holt Howard does have the year that it was manufactured on it as well. And they made this for a couple of years, didn't they, Bill? Didn't they make yeah. it for two or three, three years? years. It, yep. Again, it wasn't meant to be made for a long time, but it was so super popular. Everyone wanted it in their house. There's a whole chapter dedicated to this mm -hmm. one line in the whole Howard book. And if you go back and watch my YouTube video where I actually featured these about a year ago, um, I talk a lot about them. There are other coordinating pieces. There are, there's a larger creamer. There's a napkin holder. There's a letter holder. Mm -hmm. There's a wall pocket. There's a butter dish. The butter dish is super cool. In fact, Jason, did you see it when we were at Black Rose? No, I missed yeah. it. But answer Tracy, yes, we do collect it. And I still have my collection. Yep. But I have all these pieces or I would be interested in it. Yeah, that butter dish was $40, but I was tempted because I, I have something for creamers and butter dishes. I think you all know that. But yeah. we have a bid. So I'm going to go ahead and start a countdown. If anyone else is interested, you get everything that you see here. So it is, what did I say? seven pieces plus two lids so technically nine pieces and if anyone's interested i have salt and pepper shakers and an oil and creamer oil and vinegar coming up later anyway so i'm gonna we're looking for 76 or more for everything you see here 20 19 18 17 16 15 14 13 12 11 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 Three, two, one, bid end. Bill, this is such a great deal. Even if you were a reseller, you could buy it, definitely make money on it, or keep a couple pieces. Yeah, I mean, I added up what I have them listed for on VAMP, but the point is, what a great opportunity to potentially keep them all together, right? right? I found them together, but in VAMP, I had to split them up. I couldn't sell them all as one set. So, all right, so there is the bid end. Liz, thank you for your just in case of 82. Mick came in with a bid of 85. So Tumbleweed, this is coming to Eastern Washington. Congratulations. All right, congratulations. I'm trying something different tonight. I don't bring brass to the sale that often, so I have choice. And it's going to be $10 on some brass candlesticks. They're not Baldwin. I'm not sure who made them. And they are being sold the way I show them. There is some patina and there is some tarnishing on them. So for $10, I'll let the new owner decide if they want to clean them or not. Okay. But I have two sets. So here's your larger set. Okay. And they do have a squared off base. That's what the bottom looks like. There is a good weight to these. These are very heavy. These are actually heavier than Baldwin uh, candle stick holders that I have sold before. So I do believe these have an age to them. You can actually see, look at the diamond effect around. Again, I left the patina on them. Some folks like the patina, some don't. These measure nine inches tall. So this will be your first set at just $10 if anybody's interested. So you have the two rounded parts here, and then you actually have some deco design. Let me get my fingers off that so you guys can see. I feel like these are a little bit on the older side. And I think these would look great in your modern decor, but I think they have that great deco flair. That almost looks like an old top there in the center. So, and there is your base. And again, you can see they do have that, you know, dullness to them. I did not clean them because 
I wanted to let it up to the new owner, but I'm pretty sure these are going to clean up and shine up really beautifully. So you're right, Kelly. It's funny. When I was showing these tonight, Tina said, are you sure you want to take those? Like, because it is. It, this, these are hot right now. So $10, that is your first choice. They are the nine-inch ones, okay? Again, I'm trying to – all this one had on the bottom was a 16, and then it's taped onto the bottom. So let me double-check the other one. Again, $10 a set if you guys don't have any. This could be your chance to grab some. So, again, they're not Baldwin to the best of my um, knowledge. There is, just note, there is somewhere here to this one. And then this one is stamped here on the bottom there in the round. And it kind of looked like a P or an H. But this will be your second set of $10. Okay, I'm going to keep it moving. I'm not seeing any interest in these. That's okay. But this will be your second set coming in at 7 inches tall. They are the more rounded um brass candlesticks and you can tell they have a patina on them thank you thank you nate i think they are too there is you can see there is some dulling to it but i'm almost certain that these are going to clean up really well for you and some folks like that if you guys do like a scary halloween decor you want them to have that age on them so there they are together if you bought both sets you could mix and match and again this is me going out on a limb because i don't i don't bring brass I don't think I've ever offered, well, maybe a brass figurine or so. So, And then there is some patina right here, but I'm sure that's going to clean off. Hello, Karen Chase. Good to see you. Again, $10. These are your small set. So these are coming in at seven inches tall. So let me sit these over here. And then I had started out with the nine inch set, but I'm not seeing any interest and we're not going to hold you up. Maybe folks want to think about it so we can bring them back. All right, Bill. Okay, I'm trying to show my harder to show things early. And so up next, I have a choice starting at $10 of some vintage George Briard linen. I love these. I believe they are tea towels, but they're quite large. Um, the first one, I actually have two of these with the rooster design. And if you see these creases in it, it's because I think they've never been used before. I think these are new old stock, just not in... Um, in a package. But if you love mid-century, even if you wanted to hang these or frame these, they're pretty fantastic. So $10, I have three. I have two in the rooster design. So two uh, that you see exactly uh, on the screen right now. And they are big as well. They are 28 inches from top to bottom and they're 17 inches across. So this is the first design. And again, there are two of them. They're on that really great kind of like cottony bark cloth uh, material. They're really fantastic. Um, made in Poland, actually says 100% pure linen, actually. And they are signed George Briard down here on the bottom. So two of the roosters. And then I have a third which is this great set of fruit with the big old pineapple right there in the middle. Same size as the other one, same condition. All the original creases are in them. Such great colors. Yeah, very bright, very graphic. Again, frameable, if that's what you're interested in. Would make great gifts to somebody. If you have a friend who loves mid-century, um, these would be fantastic, especially if they love the oranges and the golden rods and the avocados. They're just such, such good colors. And look at that pair. Look how stylized that pair is right there. Yeah. Super, super cool. So there's the fruit. There's one of that one. And then there are two of one of my R's of the day, roosters. So what are your three R's again, Bill? I've already gone over them, Jason. You haven't been paying attention. <laughs> just wanted everybody, to let everybody in the chat knows. Okay, I just wondered maybe. Redware, I'm... roses, and rooster, Jason. Okay, I don't Red know why you got to yell, Bill. Say it three times. <laughs> what? Rest? What? Roosters, redware, and roses. That's one time, Jason. What did you say? I said say it three times fast. No, I said I thought you said say all three of them real fast, and I did. I said all three of them really fast. I thought that's what you said. <laughs> oh, thank you for your bits. I'm going to go ahead and start a countdown. I'm in love with these. Um, so right now we're looking for 13 or more for choice, uh, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 
nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bid end. That's right, Karen. We're off to see the wizard. He's Red wearing and roosters and roses. Oh my! That's what she was referring to, I think. Oh. Wizard of Oz. <laughs> These are so hard to find, you guys. Unused. So, yes. Unused. And it's got that Christmas. You know when you find one of those tablecloths mm -hmm. that you just want to keep forever? That's what these mm -hmm. feel like. Okay, so it looks like uh, before the bid end, it was Karen, Chase and Vintage, came in with the high bid. Um, Karen, let me know if you would like the fruit, the roosters, and if you wanted the roosters, how many? There are two. And then Aunt Kiki would be next. These are fantastic. Hello, Blythe. Good to see you. So Karen's going to take one rooster. So I have one more rooster and the fruit left, if anyone is interested. And it looks like Aunt Kiki is up next. So the fruit or another rooster. And I got you, Karen. Rooster right. for you. And then Patty Rose is on deck if there's any left. And Kiki wants one rooster as well, Bill. Okay, so if anybody else who had a bid in wanted the fruit, just let me know, and I will set it aside for you. Thank you all. All right. All right, guys. And thank you all for joining us here tonight. If you're not subscribed to Bill's channel, please do. The link to his YouTube. All right. Patty wanted the last one. So, Patty, congratulations. If you guys thank are not subscribed. Subscribe to his channel. The link is down there below. If you're watching this in the replay, please give him a follow here on YouTube and over on Instagram. And please consider giving me a follow as well. All right. It's been a little bit, but I found some more. I have choice on typewriter tin. So the first one, I think typewriter tins are fun to put in those little cubbies. They're fun to actually use as little trinket boxes. But they're also sometimes, also sometimes when they're decorated, they're fun to put into your uh, decor. And this is a great Carter's ideal with these great little flowers on there. I believe this is probably 1950s. It's in very good condition. There's no rusting. There's no real wear to it. It is um, the Remington there on the bottom. It, it would be the black medium is what was in here. And I want to go back to a time where they actually give you tin and it was supposed to be disposable. So the inside is super clean on this. Um, so, and these are fun, like I said, to use um, in your decor. They're fun. To, they're very collectible. They're even going up and becoming more collectible. Um, and they're just fun. I like to use them to put little tchotchkes in. So you can put jewelry and stuff in them. So two and a half inches in diameter. So there is your Carter's one. Again, very flower power, very 1950s. That one is fun. This one, I love the font. So this one is your tagger. And this one is a great, you can see it has a little wear to it, but it gives it that great patina. And this is very 1930s looking. I love this one, and it is reading true to color. Thank you, Bug. I see you in at 11. Um, it has that little seal down there on the bottom right there, and it is in that great 1930s kind of burgundy and very like um, – it's like a gold. It's like a gold on there. So here is your side. This one measures two and a half inches as well, and it is very clean on the inside. It just has that typical uh, tin patina, and a lot of these, um, um, they are the um, – Gosh, words are hard today. They are that uh, when they're printed, they're printed like um, lithograph. Yes. Thank you, Bill. So a lot of times when they did these, it was in a lithograph style. So and this one actually is it, it also the back here is that yellowy gold that matches the front. So very good condition for what it is. That is your second one. And that is your first one. So top bidder can take one or two. You can see this one's just a little bit bigger than the tagger. So we have Carter's or tagger. So counting down just in case for active bidders. So 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bid end. Always fun advertising pieces. If you want to start a collection, Again, these are fun to tuck in little nooks and crannies. If you're not following Katie Vintage and Vinyl, you really should. She has a collection, and it's fun to see how she displays her items as well. Thank you, Patty. I see you're just in case. And I think Bug had an 11, so Patty, at $12, you get first choice. Let me know if you want the Carters or if you want the Tagger. Again, it has that cool deco 
seal on it. And um, I'll keep my, okay. And so you just let me know which one you're interested in. They're both yours, Patty. Congratulations. Add into the collection. All right, Bill. Okay, my last um, larger item for the day, $30, Jason, if anyone's interested. And I ha I don't know why I always have to bring some wall art, particularly when it's a beautiful floral. And in this case, I have this amazing framed white rose painting, which is signed. Um, it's not dated, but it's signed C. Nichols. But it is beautiful, beautifully done in this really pretty blue bowl with that. You can see this gold ring around the bowl and buds and all and flowers in all stage of opening and a really gorgeous ornate frame. I did notice before um, before the show that there is some white paint on the frame. I think that would be super easy to remove. I didn't try to do it because I just noticed it, but it's generally pretty easy to remove with a little bit of alcohol. I'll just test it on the surface, but it is super, super gorgeous. It is 18 inches from top to bottom and 16 inches across. And as I always say, if the frame is not what's interesting to you, this is all um, uh, held in by those window glazer tips, which would be really easy to take out. And I could just send the painting itself. So it is actually painting on board. Um, it's, not on a, it's not on a mat, it's on a board, but it's super nice. I love these so much. And I love the black detail mm -hmm. uh, around the frame. Just really, it makes this a striking, striking piece. I agree, it is really pretty. Really fun. Let me just give you a close up on. It's not under glass, obviously, as you can see, or we'd see a crazy glow, but it's super, super pretty. You know, mixing this in with like cruels and things like that, the different kinds of texture, it looks really good if you do a gallery wall. Yeah. And again, more walls in this house. This would not be coming to a sale. I, I can't get enough of these. And if you're not familiar with these mats, this is actually a cloth mat here. This part is cloth. And a lot of times, if any water gets on them, they get pretty stained. But this one is actually quite good. It is. And KB knows art. Beautiful shadowing, she says. And I agree. It is really nice. Add a couple brass candlesticks to that. Boom, you're, you're ready to go. Them. I'm yeah, telling you. In. And maybe some toll candle holders on either there side. There you go. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Really cool. Absolutely. Yeah, but I get that you need, you, this is a commitment because you need space for it. So we'll bring it back up to recap, give it a think, and we'll see what Jason has next. All right, guys, there's a few things that I did not preview. So some things were not in my reel. So I did move some things around because one of the things I did break. So um, $18 choice, and uh, it's going to be on some pink depression glass salt and pepper shaker. So uh, your first choice are these great paneled. These are made by Hazel Atlas, so they are marked on the bottom. There you go. You can see the Hazel Atlas design. You are going to have to polish. These are the original tops, so they do have a little patina. That one's got a little ding. But if you guys love pink depression glass, these are dainty and fun. Again, no chips, no cracks, no haze to them on the inside, and they are both marked Hazel Atlas. And they do have that gray panel on the side, and these are three inches tall. So it is reading true to color. It is pink depression glass. There is some tarnishing to the tops that you might have to polish off, but I'm leaving it the way I found them. So that's going to be your first choice. In the pink depression glass is the Hazel Atlas, okay? In the pink panel. Now, these are really, if you all know your depression glass, uh, these are really fun, and they have their original toppers. They're made by the Jeanette Glass Company, and this is the Cherry Blossom pattern, which is a very, very uh, collected pattern. I do love the deco tops on them. These are true. Uh, these are their true aluminum tops. This is the way I found them. I don't think they've ever really been used. There you can see the way the top is. You can actually see how they squared off. And these are taller ones. And let me see if we can show you guys the cherry blossom pattern. There you go. You can see the cherries and the blossom on there. And these are a little harder to find that they have the original aluminum cap on them. And these would be your taller ones coming in at four inches tall. So the only condition issue with these is, remember, these are molded glass. So some of the mold, not that it's sharp, it just might be a little rough. So there we go. Now you guys can see the cherries on there. So cherry blossom by the Jeanette Company. And that is, they put a cherry on the bottom. So you can see a cherry on the bottom too. Um, buttermilk and cream wants to know if your picture was on a canvas, Bill. No, it's, it's on wood. wood. It's on wood. Okay. So here is, the, oh, there you go. Now you can really see the cherry. 
Uh, the cherry blossom is very, very collectible. It was so collectible that they actually reproduced it. Some other glass companies did. But these are your original aluminum tops. And if you guys do research, you're going to see um, there's not a lot of them around that have those aluminum tops. And these are a little larger, very deco, made by the Jeanette company. And that is your cherry blossom. Nikki, I see you in at 20. Thank you so much. And then we'll show them next to each other. So you have two choices of Great Depression era pink uh, shakers. This is your Hazel Atlas. And this has your like columns here on the side. Very, very, very small, just three inches tall with the original toppers. And then this is your Cherry Blossom made by Jeanette. Sorry, it's not reading all that great, but let me show you again on the bottom so you guys can definitely see the cherries here. There you go. Now you can see the cherries there on the bottom. So Karen is in at 22. Thank you guys so much. And we'll just hold one of each up because it'll be on choice. We're looking for 23 or more. This one we'll just call cherry when you win it. This one we'll we'll just call um we'll call that we'll we'll go larger small, larger small. Man, then a day for Jason. Nikki, I see you're 23. Terry, you'd have to come in at 24 or more. Again, if you guys are doing research on these, you're gonna see that this is that that's a good price for the Jeanette and also for the Hazel Atlas. So Teresa is the first one in at 24. So we're looking for 25 or more. Top bidder can pick which ones they want. Terry is in at 25. Thank you so much. Let's count them down just in case for active bidders. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bid end. Two great glass companies. We have Jeanette. With the cherry blossom, original lids, no issues, or we have the hazel atlas. Fun, fun, depression glass shakers. Thank you, Terry. I saw your 30. Nikki is in with a just in case of 33. Right before that bid end, thank you, Karen G. So Nikki, for $31, let me know if you want the large ones or the small ones. And you can kind of see how they each had their own spin on making the pink. One was very transparent. One was a little deeper in pink. So, Nikki, just let me know if you want the tall ones or the short ones. Terry, you will have backup. All right, cherry Nikki. Ones. Congratulations. You got the cherry ones. So, Terry, let me know if you wanted the Hazel Atlas ones at 30. And then the next one back will be, so we had Terry. So then it looks like, come on. So it was Terry, Teresa. And at 26. So, Teresa, you would be next. So, we're just okay. Karen. Okay. So, if you guys can just watch the chat in your order, Teresa, let me know if you were interested at 26. And then okay. Karen at 22. Okay. And then we have Michael in at 24. Oh, 24, right. Yep. So, Michael was in at 24, sir. Let me know if you were interested. And I'm sorry, we'll move as quickly as possible here. Yep. And you're right, Karen. And I think that was everybody. So we'll just wait. I'll watch the chat. Michael, they could be yours for your bit of 24. If I missed you guys, let me know in the chat. And if not, if Michael takes a pass, we'll bring them back in the recap. Michael says Michael is interested. All right, Michael. Thank you so much. They're yours, sir. Thank you. Okay, $16, Jason. I'm back to roosters on this round. And I put together a little a little grouping. So you'd be bidding on everything that you see here. There is a set of rooster salt and pepper shakers, and then a great little hen on a nest. Um, the hen on the nest is pretty remarkable because all of the paint on its comb and on its thing here, there's a name for it. Waddle. Remember. It's, it's a waddle. waddle. Yes, it's all there. You often see that that paint is missing, and both of the red eyes are there. And this one is sometimes really hard to know who manufactured these. This is another great glass company that we love. This is made by Westmoreland. The WG is there on the bottom, um, so we can actually verify it. And it's in great condition. No chips or cracks. Just really, really great condition. Beautiful piece of milk glass with incredible paint still on it after all this time. The, um, the the hen on the nest is five inches tall, six inches from side to side. And then I'm going to include, if anyone's interested, a pair of Japan salt and pepper shakers. Um, they are cold painted. Uh, so all of the gorgeous coloring, the, the olives, the avocados, the reds, 
uh, the yellows is all cold paint on top. And you can see that, you know, when I rotate them, you see some paint loss. If you wash these, you get in a little bit of trouble. So someone tried to wash them at some point. But what's interesting is um, there's an S&P on both. And the S&P are both the sides that show the best, which is fortunate. They do have their stoppers. No chips or cracks. Quite a bit of crazing, quite frankly, on these salt and pepper shakers. I love uh, I love Bill. I love all of the colors of everything that you're bringing tonight. They're I know. So I do, too. Because it's we're 70s kids. That's why. Yes. We love this. We love this. So good. Um, so the shakers are four inches tall. So I'll show the entire selection one more time. So everything here uh, for that start price. Gosh, you could put mints in that little covered, um, in that little uh, head on the nest. So good. Like you want to put mints in there. You want to put pepperoncinis in it. Right. I do. I do. You, do. you definitely do. Or some olives. It would be really fun. All right. We'll bring it back later. All right. And thank you, Karen G, for being our official mod and bid ender. I'm going to bring my, I think it's my highest priced item for the evening. So I'm going to bring that right now. It's going to start at $40. Okay. If you got, wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. We got, we got some bids coming in here. So hang on. We got Aunt Kiki in at 16. Let's switch this back around. Patty Rose is saying potato salad. All right. I'm here for oh, it. Oh, Patty Rose. That's music to my ears. So good. So I'll just do a quick countdown. We're looking for 17 or more. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bid end. What are you like doing, Jason? Are you crafting? No. <laughs> I bumped I bumped something here on the floor. I got a feeling we hit a pretty bad lag there. That, yeah. There we go. All right. Thank you so much, Aunt Kiki. These are yours. All right. Back to my item. It's starting at $40. It's the highest priced item I have of the evening. If you guys know poodles and cookie jars, I don't know how else to say it, but this is a tremendous price. It has no condition issues. This is from the 1950s. Everybody says, now I don't have a book, but uh, the research I found, everybody believes that this is made by the American Bisque Company. So there is no major damage. There's one or two areas where there might be a glaze pop, but that was in manufacturing. And if you guys love the 1950s and if you love snooty poodles, $40 is going to give you an opportunity to have a tremendous cookie jar. The way they actually created the lid, it kind of is like a little uh, French beret almost, like a little French cap. Again, no chips to that at all. Again, this is all pottery, and I believe it is American bisque from either the very late 40s or the 1950s. So if you guys want to do some research on it, that's fine. You're going to see that $40 is a mere fraction of what folks have gotten for these or offered these right now. So um, you have the great 1950s face on here with lashes. You have the big black poodle, uh, the big black bow here on the poodle. Now, over here on the side, there is some, where was that at? There's one or two little goose bumps on it, let's call, but that's in the manufacturing of it. So, and I think one of them was a little glaze pop, so there was a little white showing on it, um, but I don't know that it's going to show in the light. Okay, here's, there we go. Those are the two that I was talking about. So they're like little, but they're, they're glazed over. Well, no, that one I can feel. So let's just call those little glaze pops on there, um, but here is your bottom. There is the bottom on it. And again, other than that, this is in tremendous, it's in very good condition. Minimal crazing on it. It's a really fun piece. Great for that 1950s kitchen. If you guys have a coffee bar, this would be great to put your K-cups in. Um, it would just be fun to use in decor. You could definitely use it as a little trinket, you know, put a little hideaway, you know, in a, in a bedroom, whatever. Um, it measures... 11 inches tall, and at the widest, it's five and a half inches wide. So, Abby, thank you so much. We're in at 40. We're looking for 41 or more. Again, this is the Pink Poodle. I believe it is made by American Bisque Company. Bill, we didn't get a chance to talk. Do you know by chance who this could have been made by? I'm working on it, Jason. Okay. I don't I thought have... maybe for a minute it was Brush McCoy, but it's not. 
Okay. Yeah, no, all of mine, everywhere that I kept going back, I kept finding examples of, that doesn't mean somebody didn't put it in wrong and that's what everybody thought, but I have sold this once or twice before in my store for, you know, dealers, not personally, but um, every single time it's definitely late forties, probably more so 1950. So again, here is the lid. It's like a little cap, like a little French cap, no chips, no cracks to it. It has a gorgeous high glaze. Let me show you the inside. I don't think I showed you the inside. It is nice and clean and it is a very nice sized cookie jar. Sometimes cookie jars can be very big. Who made it? What did they say? American bisque. All right. All right. Uh, me and Bill are very particular to make sure, and I did my due diligence and did my research. I just didn't have a guidebook to confirm. So, so. Uh, also, in case anyone's interested, there are three color variations, and the yes. black and the pink is the yeah. least common. Yes. And isn't there a blue one? There's a blue one? There's two blue ones. There's yes. one blue one that's outlined in gold and then a regular one. Yes. And again, the black goes all the way back here for the collar. You can see the great foo-foo-ness and the fur. And again, there is some crazing, but overall from one of these cookie jars, and usually if I do find it in the wild, usually it's damaged or it's missing its lid. So I was really excited to, to bring it and be able to offer it for sale. So one more time to recap, it is, oh, oh hang on, hang on. It is Stamped USA. I'm not even reading my own notes. So here you can see it is Stamped USA right there. Wait, right here by my finger, USA. So um, no chips, no cracks. It might have the glaze pops that I showed earlier, but I have to say, I believe that's in the manufacturing of it. So, or from years, it probably had some extra um, ceramic or uh, some extra ceramic caught underneath and then it popped. So add to cart, I see you at 45. Thank you so much. Let's go ahead and do a countdown on this fun pink poodle cookie jar. Looking for 46 or more, counting down from 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. If you guys are a poodle collector or know somebody, this might be their holy grail. We didn't have room for it, or this little pooch would have been added to uh, Tina's uh, poodle collection. But um, it's really, really a fun piece. So there's the bid end. Thank you so much. So add the cart had a 45, but Abby had a just in case of a 46. Abby, congratulations. You got yourself a pink poodle cookie jar. Thank you so much. All right, Bill. Thank you, Buttermilk. That's so sweet. Um, Jason, you know what that poodle pink and black poodle reminds me of wow. it reminds me of what I'm bringing next. Okay. Um, if anyone's interested, this is going to start at $72. Okay. I was lucky enough to find a piece of Fenton black rose crest. So, so you can see that the, the inside is rose colored, but what we have around the outside is the black crest. Super, super harder to find. A variation in the Fenton ruffled bowls. And this is a large rose bowl. Look at how big it is next to my face. It is super big. It's 5.25 inches tall and five inches from side to side. And it is in super, super condition. It's gorgeous. I will point out while there are no chips, cracks, straw marks, or anything to note, there is a little bit of displaced black paint inside this ruffle. You see that there, Jason? You yes. See it. Yep. Yeah. A little bit of paint got under the pink or on top of the pink. But other than that, it's in super great condition. As I said, the rose bowl in this black rose crest is large. We, we're normal, we normally are seeing like four inch rose bowls. This is almost five and a half inches tall. And as you can see, it's beautiful on the inside. So clean. Uh, in such good condition. And I snagged this from a collection of four pieces of Black Rose Crest. Someone actually owned four pieces of Black Rose Crest, okay. which that's, that's impressive. <laughs> that's impressive. Amy, uh, wait, Bill, Lori's asking in the chat, hello, you're new here and hello, welcome. It's very, very easy. All you have to do is, bit, well, first of all, a bit in the comments. It is a commitment to pay. And then our emails, which will be up on the screen, you're going to have to email us some information. We're going to need your name, uh, your full address, and an email so we can invoice you. So that's just pretty much how it works, unless I miss something, Bill. No, that's good. 
And uh, yeah, Jameen, um, Amy is correct. This is Fenton. Yes. Whenever, typically, whenever you see any of the glass that has a, co a different color around the rim, Amen. that's called the crest. Um, you see it sometimes in, oftentimes in clear. Yeah. Uh, there's emerald crest. There's so many. Well, uh, uh, there's an oh, aqua, there's aqua crest. There's amber crest. Amber crest yep. Don't forget silver um, crest. Did you say but the that? The black rose crest is a special. This is just a special one. So yes, it is Fenton. Yeah. Super, super pretty. So I do see we have some interest. Um, and again, I just want to reiterate, this is a large Rose Bowl. This is a big one. Um, so if anyone else is interested, yep, Gold Crest. Gold you're crest yeah. right. Um, we are looking for 73 or more for this gorgeous piece of glass. Uh, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, bid end. It's just like your cookie jar, the pink and the black together. Absolutely. 1950s at its best. Love it. Love it. Agreed. How are you, Nan? It's so good to see you. So there is the bid end. Thank you so much, Karen. Kelly, you didn't need that just in case. It is yours for $72. Congratulations. And guys, make sure you stick around after our auction rounds. We do have three rounds of quick claims coming up. So uh, stick around. I know for a fact we have some really good stuff coming up. So I found this today. And since I didn't have my numbers correct, I thought I would add it. So uh, Bill, you inspired me. I have a piece of artwork. So um, it is a gorgeous watercolor. It is of these gorgeous flowers. I believe it's probably late 1930s, maybe 1940s. It is in this gorgeous wooden painted frame. The paint on the frame is in very good condition. And Tina took a good look here. First of all, we can see it is signed and it is signed by Lee, but this is a watercolor. Now, Bill, can you help me with some flowers? Would you, or no? Can no, I mean, whenever you have five petaled flowers like that, it could be so many different things. Gotcha. Five petal flowers are the most common. Um, probably some cone flowers up at the top, right. um, maybe some sort of lily, the white one, but those pink ones could be anything, gotcha. cosmos, probably cosmos. Well, I think it's a very dainty, very soft uh, picture. It would look great on your gallery wall. I don't often find these oval sized frames. It has glass in here. I believe it is the original glass to it. Now there is a little bit of tearing here to the back of the paper but I believe that's the original wire to hang it on the wall. And it is a very nice size. The size is about 16 inches tall. So it's about 16 by about 13. And the background on it is like a very, very soft uh, blue. It's reading sort of gray. It's kind of maybe like a hazel uh, bluish gray in the background. And these dainty flowers on here are just gorgeous. Like I could see this on the wall with Bill's picture or some cruels, or if you did a very 1930s, or if you had this in your powder room, or maybe one of your um, spare bedrooms. I just love the fact on how these gorgeous flowers are sort of floating here in the center. And again, I believe that this is original, the way it was put together in the 1930s. So look at the great details on the leaves on there. Again, this is a watercolor. The pinks are really good. There is some even great shadowing on there. Look at how they did the center of those flowers. So um, Lori does watercolors. All right. That's awesome. And again, this is under glass. And this is the original frame that I believe that it was framed in. So it does have like a number stamped on the back. I couldn't make out what the name said there on it. I think that just has to do with the cardboard and the way it was framed. And actually, we know it's old school because you can sort of see coming through the paper the way they drive those nails in to hold it in. So, um, again, it's a really fun, very soft. Oh, sorry, Robin. I see you in a 22. Thank you so much. And, again, it is just a gorgeous round uh, picture to put on that gallery wall, put it in a room, put it in a hallway. Again, I don't find the oval pictures like this too often and just spoke to me. So, um, you could even go as far as if you're so inclined, you could paint one of those lines in there, maybe a con, you know, maybe a color that would um, make it pop a little more, but I think it looks good just the way it is. So no damage to the piece, the glass, and the, this is sort of a very heavy painted wood. No chips to that, which is amazing. So again, it measures 16 
by 13. So let's go ahead and do a countdown. We have Robin in at 22. Thank you so much, Robin, on the uh, watercolor. And it is signed. It is signed. Hold on here by Lee. So I'm not sure who Lee was, but Lee did a good job. So 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid. And so good to see you, Weirna. Happy yes, you. How could you not know who Lee is? Everybody knows who Lee is. Well, I heard Lee's a really good guy. I have no idea who Lee is. <laughs> but if you say so, Bill, I'll take your word for it. Robin, congratulations. It's coming to you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Bill. Uh, okay, Jason, $28. And I'm going to go back to Redware because we haven't oh. seen Redware in a couple rounds. Uh, I have this super cute. Uh, actually, Redware and Rooster all in one. Yes. It's Redware with a Rooster on Double it. shot. Cute little butter pitcher. How awesome is that? And actually, the cold paint on this. Oh, look at how good it is looking right now. Mm. Other than the B on the butter, the cold paint is in really great condition. And it's just a little guy. I actually don't even have a measurement for this little butter dish. Uh, but it's super, super cute. Yeah, Lee made my shirt as well. Jason, look, it's Lee. You're right. Absolutely. Patty, you're right. Good eyes, Patty. I didn't even know that. So this little butter butter uh, pitcher is four inches tall. But again, it's a really great example of that gorgeous glaze that we get in this redware pottery. It's fully glazed on the bottom as well. It's super cool. Good question, Jameen. So cold paint is paint that's applied after a piece has been fired and glazed. So the, the brownish stuff you see here that's really shiny, that's gone into a kiln and it's it's been fired on top of the piece. This paint here is painted on top of that. And what that means basically is it's gorgeous, but it comes off pretty easily. So we always have to be careful when something's painted on top of glaze. Yeah. But in addition to the butter pitcher, I also have a larger syrup pitcher, also with a great, um, great cold paint on it. Uh, you can read syrup really clearly there. The only damage here is there is a little loss of glaze right here. Okay. Other than that, no crazing, no other damage. The cold paint is in lovely, lovely condition. So cute little, and you can see the size difference between the syrup and the butter. I don't know, Jason, though, we're, we're going somewhere with the syrup and the butter. I think we're missing yeah. one thing. Pancakes. Yeah, so we have the batter pitcher as well. Yeah. This yeah. is the pitcher for the batter. Yeah. So that's a good question, Jameen. It could be Japan Redware, but it also could be U.S. Redware. So both these were made in both uh, in both con in both areas during the same time, actually. Yeah. But because there is no maker's mark on the bottom, we don't know if it's Japan or it's uh, American. But also look at the cold paint on this rooster. Somebody just just love this collection and they um and they they didn't use it it's just such a nice collection i love the gradated height it would be fantastic for display especially i'm always jealous of those people who have room up on top of their cabinets in their kitchen where right. you can just look at the beautiful things dust them once a year once every two years once a year <laughs> <laughs> jeez but if anyone's interested you are bidding for the whole collection not for one this is one price for everything you see here. And the batter pitcher, it's just over seven inches tall. So yes. from seven down to four. Yeah. And Kelly's right. It, it pertains to the color of the clay in which it was made yep. from. Yep. Yep. It's right, a chunky guys. clay. And as I said, Redware usually doesn't chip at chunks. Like large yes. pieces of it come off. Yeah. All right, Nan, you kill me. You're hysterical. All right. $12, and Bill introduced us a while back to Abington Pottery, okay? So I've had this little nugget since about the time he brought his first piece, and I couldn't find an opportunity to bring it, and I was really ha happy to offer it tonight. So they didn't do a lot of figural pieces, but they did do a few, and they always did them in, like, maybe trios and stuff. And this is a little uh, duck figurine, and it is made by the Abington Pottery Company. It is marked on the bottom, very prominent. Um, 
If you don't know Abington Pottery, what they did was they made a lot of bathroom accessories, as in toilets and things like that. Um, but then when the Depression came, they needed to kind of come up with some other things because folks weren't, you know, building or doing as much. So they took their hardy pottery and they started making things like vases. And then for a short period, they did some figurines. So uh, this one is really fun. Again, with Bill having roosters, I thought maybe this duck. It's very abstract looking, very deco style because that's the era that it's from. It is about five inches tall by about two and a half inches across. OK, no chips, no cracks. If you guys love pink and you love decorating in the 30s, 40s, or 50s kind of decor, I thought this would be fun for you as long as I don't drop it while he's trying to peck me with his beak. Again, you can see the details. Here is his eye. There's the beak. And then they actually gave him some feathers on there. He's just really, really cute and really fun. So um, I love him so much. And he is in very good condition with no damage. So um, again, he measures just about five inches tall. And this is Abingdon Pottery. If you guys collect the vases and things like that, this would be fun to kind of tuck in there, you know, put with it. But he's that great 1950s pink that I think we all know and love. And he is just standing so proud. Look at him. He's just a proud duck. So again, something different you don't often see. This is actually the first piece of Abington uh, pottery that I've ever had that is a figure. And it was really fun to offer, to, to bring it and offer it. So let me see here. Let me just put some black behind it. I kind of feel like it's getting washed out a little bit. There you go. Now you guys can see those details even more. He is, he is Dusty Moose. He is very majestic. So again, he would look great in your decor. You could collect the other two. There's two other poses that go with that. Thank you so much, Jameen. I see you in at 12. So we're looking for 13 or more. No chips, no cracks. There does seem to be just a little discoloration up under that glaze, okay? I don't know if maybe when they were stamping it, they got sloppy, but there's just one or two little specks there. So let's go ahead and count him down. We're looking for 13 or more, and we are doing just in case if you are an active bidder. So counting down from 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. Looking for 13 or more. The bid end from Karen G. Again, thank you so much, Karen. Please make sure you're following Mr. Gillette, Grady Group of Vintage Recordings. Maybe Karen could drop that link in a little bit. Let's get him some more followers. There's that bid end. Thank you so much. So, Janine, Jameen, it's coming to you for $12. Congratulations. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. All right, Bill. Uh, Eight dollars for choice, Jason, and I actually have seven of the same thing. So you're okay. bidding on up to seven if that's what you would like. I have the quintessential mid-century rooster, made by the one and only Federal Glass Company. I have the turquoise rooster pedestal milk glass mug. Um, it's super, super cool from the design of the handle to the turquoise transfer. So this one is a white rooster on turquoise. Then we go to a turquoise rooster on white, and then it finishes off with a white rooster on turquoise. So, so neat, 5.5 inches tall. Again, I have seven of them, and the transfers are in very good condition. Every once in a while you see these and they're faded to nothing because someone put them in the dishwasher. Um, and oftentimes in the transfers, and you may see this on a few of the ones that I have, there are little lines that go across when they transfer on top. Um, but if you just look online, if you were if you wanted to get a set of four or six of these, they're super hard to find in mass. It's taken me quite a long time to collect these seven that I have. So hoping that um that I'll be able to find homes for them today because it is just such a gorgeous piece of milk glass, especially if you love the pedestal ones for sort of your hot drinks. You know, Bill, these pair well with the Pyrex butter print. If you they guys, do, don't they? yeah, it's the colors, the the rooster. If you guys do the butter print pattern, these kind of were meant to to kind of compat and go hand in hand. And they're sculptural. I mean, the, the yeah. handle is amazing. This kind of swoop down here is great. They look great in displays. They look great in a set, but they're also great to have just an individual one. If you're someone who, who likes the fancy hot beverages. Um, yeah, really, really fun. So there are up to seven if anyone's interested. Right now we're looking for 13 
or more for choice. And I'm going to go ahead and start that countdown. 20. Nine, I always want to start at 15. 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bid end. Gosh, I remember when these mugs were getting like $40 each. Yep, I know. I think I've only ever found a set of six in all the years of trying to sell kitchen. This is amazing that you have this many, Bill. Jason, every single one of them was a single find. Oh my God. Oh my I God. probably wouldn't afford, I couldn't buy them if they were in the sets because someone would know what they were. Right. Okay, so there is the bid end. It looks like D came in with a just in case right before the bid end. So Steel, you have first choice at 13. I have up to seven. Let me know how many you'd like. And then Liz, if there's anything left and it's the number you wanted, you can let me know. And then Karen, you're in at nine. Oh, good. We got to keep John happy, D. Yes. Whatever it takes. But how many <laughs> do you want? <laughs> oh, all seven. Okay. okay. Fantastic. They're yours. All right. Congratulations. All right. $10 choice. And I'm calling this my ephemera for the evening. So... Um, these are fun and send one to Karen Lord, please. That's what Steele says. All right, you guys. So this is my ephemera choice for the night. This is fun if you guys are into pinups, if you're into junk journaling, if you're into the 1950s, or even if you collect purses, okay, or things like that. So um, they are in overall very good condition. Even if you would frame the covers, I think the covers are really fun. They are the little, they are the Hiawatha. Around the world, they are the accessories. And then I, the other one is the Hiawatha hats and bags, okay? They are printed by the Heirloom Needlework Guild, okay? And they're from 1955. So both of them are 1955. So this is your white one. How cool would this look if you collected space or atomic and stuff like that and had that framed? There's a little bit of wear there, okay? That's the front. Here is your back cover. Totally different cover on the back. These would be fun to frame, 1955. And what they do is they teach you here in the back how to make these straw purses, okay? So here's a lovely lady with her straw purse. It tells you how to make it. So that's what's going on in the back. But the front, I think this would be fun if you guys wanted to disassemble and maybe frame these. They do measure about eight and a half by 11, so I'm sure you could fit them in a very standard frame. But look at this lovely lady from the 50s with the globe and her straw purse. And then you have all of these great. They're almost like pinups. I do wish they'd be in color, but I'm here for the black and white. I enjoy the black and white. So, again, $10 choice. This will be your first one. This is the blue covered book, and it is from 1955, and so is the red one that I'm going to show you. So, again, these are – like, look at the cap she's wearing. Look – I mean, you. this was just a era of time – that is never going to be recreated. So it has oodles of these pictures in the front where they had these models with their purses and their hats. And I want the owner to enjoy the fun of seeing them all. So then here in the back, it explains to you what you need, how you create some of these straw purses and hats. So there's your first choice from 1955, just $10. This was your second one. It is also made by, it's also printed by the Heirloom Needlework Guild and it is stamped on the front. Let me see if we can show you. Like, just look at this. This is like this is their little uh, motto. So the, look at that. Very atomic, amoeba-like. It's texture, line, balance, form, and color. Okay. So now remember, back in '55, it was very expensive to print color. So that's probably why this was not in color. So there you can see. There's the copyright, 1959. Thank you so much, Leanne. I see you in at 10. This one has the same thing as the other one. It has some of these different lovely ladies with their, so they actually show, okay, here she's showing the line, here she's showing the form, and then they go on and on. So, and here is the balance. So look, there's the balance. And again, I could see this disassembled. You know, my mother-in-law is a sewer, you know, in her sewing room, this would look great in a sewing room. This would look great if you guys had a changing room, if you had a walk-in closet and you kept some of your vintage purses and things in there. 
you know, just sprinkle it into your home as decor. This would even be fun. I know that it teaches you, you know, the different sewing techniques, but this would be fun to use as a coffee table book. Like, you know, if somebody's waiting on you or, you know, just hanging out, they could pick this up and give it a read. No funky smells, no funky issues. Again, here's the back part, and this would be the style of the bag, and then these would be the different things that you need by, by Hiawatha, okay? So there's your red one, and that's how we'll call it red. Some of them might be coming apart. Like this one is a little separated right there. So the red one is separated, so I'm just being careful and showing to them. There's the front. Here is your back. 1955 Mrs. Maisel Goodness, and you'll pick either red or blue. So let's count it down for Leanne. Thank you so much. We are looking for 11 or more. So we'll count it from 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one bid end. And thank you guys for hanging out with me and Bill. We know you could be other places tonight. We are very honored that you folks are spending some time with us here tonight, whether you're just enjoying the vintage, chatting with friends, or here to buy and find some fun things for yourself. So again, thank you guys so much. We appreciate you so much. So Leanne, let me know if you wanted one or two. And if you just want one, tell me if you want the red one or the blue one, and you can definitely take both. They are different, and I will watch the chat. But, Leanne, you can have one or two at your $10 each, $10 each, and I'll watch the chat. All right, Bill. $15 for choice, Jason, right. and I have some rose items, some things that would be beautiful on top of a dresser or a makeup table or somewhere else in your home, and they're all kind of different. The first one I have is this beautiful piece of Noritake, Look at that hand painting on there. Big oh. pink rose in the middle, but you got some violets, some little forget-me-nots, a gorgeous tulip up here. And I love the shape of this dish. Um, it's, it's kind of pulled up at the sides, like it's a little basket almost, with um, these gold painted handles. And then this beautiful blue side with the black border. Um, it is marked Noritake Japan on the bottom, if it will focus right there gorgeous little mark but yeah beautiful little dish um this dish is uh 2.6 inches tall and six inches from top to bottom super super pretty just want to give you a close-up on these flowers because that's why i grabbed this one it was just these flowers this wild looking tulip up there is just so 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 pretty so this is the first choice the second choice that you might want to put on your dresser or changing table or something is, uh, if you have a child, is this gorgeous little hand-painted um, trinket box. It actually says hand-painted in the Ozarks, Ooh. which I think is super cool. It's got a pink, uh, pink on the outside, pink roses on the top, and I love these trinket dishes that have a little surprise on the inside. It's actually signed by the artist on the inside, with oh, some additional hand-painted roses on the bottom. Yeah, this would make a nice little powder dish for anyone who still uses powder um, or just, you know, for, for jewelry or whatever. Uh, no condition issues, no chips, no cracks, just super, super pretty. Um, the trinket dish or dresser box is 2.25 inches tall, 4.5 inches from side to side. Just a really beautiful, beautiful painting. And then I, th I thought of you, Karen, when I when <laughs> said that it was hand painted in the Ozarks. Awesome. I have something a little bit different. I have this tapestry rose box, sort of with this gold gilted um, edging, uh, made in Japan, a blue and white Japan sticker. And it is a music box. And I recognize the song. And did I spend 10 minutes today trying to remember what the name of the song was? Did I download an app onto my phone that promised me it would be <laughs> Tell me yes. what the song was and did it work? No. no. But you'll all you'll all recognize this song. I almost remember the words. 
You give me hope to carry on. You light up my life. That's what it is. Leave it to a music teacher. She's going to know. You got it, Karen. You got it. You know, all my years of DJing and playing music, if I had to play a game of guessing the music, it's horrible for me. It's hard. I can't. Remember that that TV show where people guessed the songs like in three notes? Yeah, in like three. Yeah, that. that, I believe it. yeah, Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't. But this is actual real tapestry on here. Um, uh, all, on, on the sides and on the top, it's really gorgeous. This is um, this is uh, 2.5 inches tall, 5.75 inches from side to side. Has a beautiful mirror in great condition. Velvet lining. And again, made in Japan. So if anyone is interested, there are three rose choices for this round. I'm just going to hold them up one more time. Then we'll bring them back at the recap. Um, so the little dresser box with that gorgeous, that gorgeous um, painting on the top, the little tapestry box, and then the gorgeous Noritake. And I do see a bid, so I'm going to count it down. If anyone else is interested, we're looking for 16 or more for choice. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. You would have thought that was an easy song for me to remember, but literally it was hurting my head earlier trying to remember what it was. But when was the last time you heard it? That's my thing. Like, you don't hear some of these songs anymore. But Jason, that's one of the songs when we were kids you heard all the time. Yeah, but then it goes it extinct. Me. But then it's gone extinct. We got to bring it back. We got to bring Agreed. it back. Agreed. All right, Robin. Um, you let me know at your bit of 15 if you wanted the Tapestry, the Ozarks, or the Noritake. Japan, U.S., or J Tapestry. And I'll bring whatever's left back to the recap. Thank you. All right. All right, guys. $14 on my next item. That's weird. I found one of these uh, a few weeks ago, sold one last week, and then I did an estate auction pickup. She wants the Ozark one, the Ozark blue. This was the Ozark one. It's it's pink. The Noritake is the blue one. Okay. Do you want me to make you big? Here, let's make you big again for a second, Bill, so you can show her. So you can actually say the blue. If you wanted the blue one, just let me know. Or if you wanted the pink one. Pink or blue. That's probably easier. All right. Thank you so much, Kelly, for those kind words. We really appreciate it. We all work very hard. Okay, just a tapestry. Yep, got it. Okay. We work really hard, Kelly. So thank you. That means so much to hear that. Thank you so much. So, um, but I'd found this in an auction estate. I didn't even know I was getting it. And I was excited to bring it again. So for $14, these were very popular back in maybe the I believe, I believe it was the 40s and the 50s. It's a little vanity mirror, which was also a frame. So a lot of times, like the one I sold last week, there was some hazing to the mirror, okay? Because I don't think they were the most highest grade mirror, but these were used for the, the boys would use them as shaving mirrors and the ladies would use them as makeup mirrors. So they're really fun. This one still has its original hand polished frame, the little ad work on it on the inside. Yes, I know the way I say mirror, Amy. And then this is a pretty famous actress from back in the day. And her name is, and I had to write it down, it is uh, Madeline Carroll. She actually was in an Albert Hitchcock movie. If you guys are familiar with Albert Hitchcock, it was The 39 Steps. That was her, one of her name to fames, okay? So this is kind of a, a threefold. So you have the new old stock lover that might want this, um, and that is glass. So there is glass here in the front, and it is metal, so you have that. So you have the new old stock to fact, the hand polished frame in there. Plus you have the pinup actress. And then there is a mirror on the, on the reverse side. And then it is this gorgeous little metal kickstand on there. So these are really fun and they measure just about like it says here on the front. It, <laughs> it measures about three and a quarter by four and a quarter. So it is. You're right, Karen. It is the Pennsylvania. Funny, I was talking to my hairdresser about that today, growing up around here. Some of the things that were harder on the R's and things like that than some other folks are dialect-wise. So it is in black and white. If you were so inclined that the glass does slide out, you could put whatever photograph on the inside you want. But I have to tell you, I love it as is. I love it the way it is. I think this would look really fun 
on your end table, put it on your makeup table if you want to. And again, it does double as a mirror. There is a little hazing to it, uh, discoloration, darkening to it, but it still works. Now, that was my poor attempt of trying to clean it. So you could clean it a little bit more. And again, the measurements on the front are true to what it says. It measures about three and a quarter by four and a quarter. So, I mean, how is that, is that a sticker? I don't know. Um, let me see if I can see. No, it looks like it looks like it is a little piece of paper that's in between the glass and the portrait. So seeing the one I sold last week didn't have any issues on it. I'm pretty sure that's just a little piece of paper. So if you slid the glass down, which I don't want to take it apart, I can tell and I can see that's a little piece of paper on top. So um, you could easily remove the hand polished part if you want to. You're just going to have to slide the glass down, take that off, and then you would just have her portrait. And then you could do both if you wanted to replace the portrait. So you can see here, there's like a little rail that goes down on the inside of that piece of metal or chrome. And then you can slide the glass and replace it with whatever photograph you want. So, but yes, that is um, just a little piece of paper. You can kind of see it's raised a little bit. Are you, is that reading, Bill? Can you see that, that it's so, all right, there's no interest. That's okay. We'll bring this back into recap, but it was $14 if anyone's interested. And we'll get going over here to Bill. $18, Jason, for another really cool piece of mid-century uh, ceramic pottery. I have this amazing coffee carafe. Uh, the name of this design is called Break of Day. This is made by um, Taylor Smith and Taylor, who made a lot of the really famous mid-century atomic looking um, dinnerware sets. Uh, you have a bid. Yeah. Can I, we'll just count that down. Thank you so much, Laura. I see you. Let me get myself over. I feel like we got a pretty bad lag. Sorry about that, Bill. So right. let's count it down. 15 or more, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one, bid end. And the easel part does flatten in case you didn't want to have it like that. So you could flatten it and display it like that. I'm sure you can kick it around and actually use that bar to hang it from. So thank you so much, Laura. It is yours. Congratulations. And Bill is back in at $18. Start right. Today. So I have that awesome atomic looking, almost Sputnik look, Sputnik looking. It looks like one of the space uh, vehicles from the 50s um, made by Taylor Smith and Taylor. They made all that uh, awesome atomic dinnerware. And this was their coffee carafe, but people do use it as a vase or as a water container. Um, and it is nice and big. It's as big as my head. Um, it is uh, it is 9.5 inches tall. And it's also quite wide from side to side. It's eight inches, but it's super cool. Um, it's got this gorgeous design on it. Again, the design is named Break O Day. I like saying Break of Day, but that's not really what it's called. They said Break O Day, but that gotcha. always doesn't roll off my tongue. Uh, I like I like the word of, but it's super cool. And if you didn't want to display roosters every once in a while, you've got an awesome, again, spaceship looking uh, piece of ceramic where you can rotate it. Agreed. Really, this really fun. This would be so fun. Use those roosters throughout the year, spin it around and use it for your uh, spaceman bottles for your patriotic. Ooh. That kind of looks like a spaceship. That's a good idea, Jason. I love that. We this need more so spaceship fun. vintage. We do. We do. Yeah, it looks like the landing capsule. You're absolutely <laughs> right. This is the it thing does. that falls back into the ocean, right? Yeah. After the space shuttle is done. Agreed. I don't see any ast astronauts in it, though. It is nice and clean, though. You don't see a genie in there, do you, Bill? This is we have the we actually have the real genie bottle. Did I oh, ever show right you that? You yes, yeah. no, you you did. That's fun. If you look down into it, there's little pillows and a nice big soft round couch. It's really good. Really sure. good. Sure. So eighteen dollars if anyone's interested. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thank you guys so much again for hanging out with us. Karen G, thank you for being our official mod and bid ender. We could not do it without you. $15. And I found this piece of glass last Tuesday at the flea market with uh, Amy and Bill. And I did a little bit of research on it. And I do believe that this is Fenton. Okay. I believe that this is a piece of Fenton. It's not stamped. 
Um, I believe it's an older mold, and maybe they made it later because it is in the periwinkle color, but I believe that it is a reverse drape ruffled bowl. OK, I mean, that is really fun. I mean, considering Bill had roosters and things, doesn't that look like feathers on that there? That is exactly what it is, because I remember that. I mean, this is such a Super Bowl. And look at the look at the opalescence on there. And then you can see the texture here on the side. So um, I've never had one of these gorgeous bowls before, but this is going to go well with your older glass. Like if you guys, you know, collect Northwood or Jefferson or stuff like that. There are no chips. There are no cracks. This is just a really, really pretty piece of glass and you guys can tell uh, it's reading true to color so that is in the periwinkle color another color glass you don't see that often with the opalescence okay so no chips to any of that and the bowl measures about eight and a half inches in diameter so um, again you could use this for all sorts of things you could use this to maybe put by the door lay your mail in you could definitely use this during the holidays. I mean, as is, it's just a gorgeous piece of glass. So, and I was really excited that I found it. I don't often find uh, gorgeous opalescent glass like this in the wild. So uh, these are really fun. They make great centerpieces. They make great console bowls. And there is absolutely no chips at all to any of the ruffles. So let's get in here and look at the great details on there. Isn't that just gorgeous? Look at how the opalescent lays in that drape effect. I just love this. And then you have like the effect here on the base. Let me flip it around so you guys can see what's, look at that. Look at how that periwinkle blue is coming through. Could you imagine having this by your window and the light coming through? I mean, it's definitely going to glisten and just be uh, gorgeous. This would make a great fruit bowl. If you guys have a small little table in your kitchen, you could definitely lay your fruits in there. Uh, but it's really, really fun in really good condition. I was really happy there's no scratches on it. No condition issues. Oh, and it does have a glow to it. So sometimes the opalescent glass does glow purple under black light. So if you put this under your black light, you're going to get a very vibrant purple glow, more so than you do the lucite. So um, it's not like a uranium or a cadmium, but with that opalescence in there, you do get a very vibrant um, purple uh, glow coming from it. So one more time, it's five and a half inches in diameter. I do believe it is made by Fenton. Um, I believe it's one of their older molds, and this might be when they brought it back. And it is in a periwinkle color with the opal essence, and it is reversed drape in the ruffle pattern. Look at that. Just so good. But I don't think anyone's interested. That's all right. Oh, Nikki, thank you. I see you in at 15. We might have a heck of a lag here or a delay. So let's count it down for Nikki. We're looking for 16 or more. We'll keep it moving uh, just in case for active bidders. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bid end your right steel. That is a lovely color. And I do know that they do make the periwinkle in some compatible pieces. So um, you could, could probably find some candlesticks to add to this gorgeous bowl. So there's our bid end. Thank you so much. And congratulations, Nikki. Thank you so much. It's coming to you for $15. All right, Bill. That was a great price for that, Jason. It is. Really good price it is. for that. Okay, so I have a choice round, no surprise. Uh, starting at $16, if anyone's interested. And I'm back to some cool redware. Uh, I have this little donkey in, with the paint is really good. Look at his face. Look at his mouth. His paint is super, super good. You never, never see the redware this good. Um, and he's pulling this little metal cart. This little metal cart has these two holes in it. And it holds. And you can see actually the Japan stickers right there. It's right around the uh, metal cart. Or is it a Taiwan sticker? Keep going, Bill. I'll be right back. Nope, it's a Japan sticker. Um, it holds the little salt and pepper shakers, and they say little brown jug on them. They're super, super cute. So he is a salt and pepper shaker holder. Um, I think he's adorable with his little metal cart. Um, it's all in good condition. Every once in a while, these little nubs that hold the cart onto the body get chipped off, but these are in really great, really great condition. Just a fun little set for display or for use. Um, they both still do have their stoppers on the bottom. Let me just double check the other one. Yes, they both still do have their stoppers. 
if the donkey with little jugs isn't interesting to you, I actually have a pair of little ladies. No, actually, it's a little boy and a little girl. Uh, they are deer, redware deer. Um, and they are also shakers. So there's the buck. You can see his antlers there and the doe with the yellow bow. And again, they are in exceptional condition. They have the red and the red and the red, the blue and white uh, Japan sticker on the bottom. And they're super cute. These um, shakers are 4.75 inches tall. And I think they're adorable. They're very like graceful sculpts too. When you look at the bottom, like how their legs are sculpted, they do have their little dots on their bums as well. The cold paint again is in exceptional condition. Um, I've seen a lot of redware and you just don't see it this good. No. A little bit of loss there on that ear. Bill, did I ever tell you we used to have a pretty big redware collection? That was my thing for a while, from decanters to ashtrays to shakers. Like, You never told me, Jason, because you like secrets. Well, I was just going to compliment you, Bill, and say, like, your redware tonight is on point when it comes to the condition of cold paint. But I don't know. I might take that back now. I might uh, you that. said it, so that's all that matters. But, yeah, <laughs> I've, been, I've been putting it together for a while. I've been thinking right. about doing a redware sale for a while. Um, I love finding it when it's in good condition and saving it. Uh, I feel like because I'm a pottery guy, I feel like redware is one of the underappreciated types of pottery, um, but it definitely has its place in people's collections. Uh, and if you read about the history of redware, there's a lot of cultural significance in places like China and Eastern Europe um, because it was sort of the pottery, it was the poor man's pottery. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, that's what they made their everyday stuff out of when they didn't have, you know, finer chinas or porcelains like that. So I'm going to go ahead and count it down. Um, uh, we're looking for 17 or more if anyone else is interested uh, for choice. Uh, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, one, bid end. Is Amy telling stories? No, I think Amy's telling it like it is, Bill. I think Amy's telling it like it is. <laughs> all right, there it is. Well, all, all I know is when Amy finds a box full of knee hugger pixies. Oh, my. She goes a little crazy. I can't believe she threw you down like that, Bill. That was a little, I mean. Yeah, you see, I got. Sure. I know, like. I mean, she even had the cashier gasp. Like it was, it was a whole thing. Thank you so much, Lisa. The choice is yours. Let me know if you would like the deer or the donkey or both. All right. All right. She wants the deers. The deer. Oh, yours. Deer. They're super cute. All right, guys. $16. And I thought this was a classy. Tina found this, by the way. I thought this was a classy porcelain vase and could fit a bunch of different decors. Okay. I researched the heck out of this. I could only find one other version, and it seems that this was so popular, they actually did a version in Japan, okay? So she does have a little cold paint wear to her shoe. I didn't touch that up because I know from hearing you folks, you tell me, leave it the way it is. So that's the way we found it, okay? It is marked Germany on the bottom, and it does have that, you know, that under the glaze kind of uh, mold number on it, Okay. Tried to research Germany when it's stamped in gold like that. Couldn't find anything. I do believe that this is probably from the 1940s. It is this gorgeous Victorian style woman or maybe 1930s style woman, kind of a Gibson face, sitting there reading a book. So for $16, she is a vase. Okay, so it is a fluted porcelain vase. And this is the back column behind her. She is sitting on a chair. And she's in very good condition. She's this dainty little girl with a flower in her hair. Again, I think it's really different. I've never seen one like this. I think that in an entryway, you know, if you have one of those maybe uh, small narrow tables behind your uh, sofa, maybe, I think this would look just so cute. Even if it was in a, on a parlor table, put some flowers coming out of it. It's in very good condition with no chips or cracks. The only condition issue is she has a little bit of cold paint missing right there on her feet. So thank you, Nikki. I see you in at 16. Again, I found one other version of her. She was made in Japan and was stamped Japan. And it was not done as good as this German porcelain one is. Okay. Look at the rosiness on her cheeks. 
No chips, no cracks, just the issue to the cold paint. This is like a creamy, like a creamy uh, brown color. And then it like ombres up. And then she's sitting on this regal chair by that column, like I said, maybe minimal gold paint wear to the top, but this is a nice size. This piece measures about seven inches tall, about seven inches tall and about five inches wide, okay? So if you guys are into the Gibson girls, if you're into like Victorian era pinup girls, I thought this would just be a fun addition. Um, I guess you could put in larger uh, things you'd wanna put in there, but I think that's best used as a vase, okay? One more time, no chips, no cracks, just a little bit of cold paint wear to her feet and maybe to the gold up here on the rim. So Tracy, I see you in at 17. Thank you so much. So we are looking for 18 or more. We're going to count her down. Look at those flowers in her hair. She is just such a petite, cute. Oh, this is, this is elegant, guys. I just think it's elegant. It is seven inches tall. So it's coming in from the very top part to the base is seven inches, Tracy. And then width-wise here, it's about five inches. So uh, no damage. Now, I did my best to clean this. There is a little bit of schmutz and dirt down in there that I couldn't get to. So I really believe this is older uh, than the 50s, okay? I, but I cannot date it because I could not find um, where and what era that style of font of Germany was used, okay? So let's count it down. We're in a Tracy with 20. Thank you guys so much for your appreciation of it. She is very feminine, lovely steel. You are right. Just in case for active bidders. So let's count her down from 20, 19, 18, 17, 16. I do too, Philomena. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, two, one, bid end. I'm with you, Philomena. That's what I suspected. I just cannot find an exact example to definitely say, but I have to believe that they probably had different dress colors, hair colors, things like that. Thank you all for the just in cases. I see you, Tracy. I see you, Nikki. I see you, Robin. Right before the bid end, there we go. So Nikki had a 27. Well, Tracy had a 22, but Robin had a just in case of 31. So for 28, Coming to you, Robin. Thank you so much. And thank you all for the interest. Congratulations. All right, You're Bill. super pretty. Uh, $32, Jason. Okay. If anyone's interested, have you ever seen these before? I have. And I, they have a stay, make a whole series of these. Right. Spice racks, everything. Yeah. And salt and pepper shakers. And yep. everyone online mm -hmm. says they're Holt Howard people. They're these are not Holt Howard. They're Everybody not. says they are though. No, but I have these awesome oil and vinegar cruets that are super cool. I mean, even the handles are different colors so that you can mm -hmm. tell the difference. Um, and they're in great, great condition. Now, here's one of the things that I think confuses people. They are named Cock Rouge on the bottom, which stands for Red Rooster. And that is the official name of the whole Howard line. But gosh, even the woman I bought these from was trying to argue with me that these were Holt Howard. And I kept telling her that they're not. Um, and I didn't know for certain at the time, but I just had a feeling that they weren't. But you can see that there's an O and a V on their chests. Um, and yeah, there is a really cool spice rack as well, yeah. salt and pepper shaker, but not super common. Um, they don't come around all that often. I actually think the real Holt Howard ones, at least for me, I find more frequently. Um, this is the only oil and vinegar I've ever had in this set. They are um, 5.75 inches tall and they're in great condition. They do have some crazing and the vinegar does have, I just want to point out a little rough spot right there on the back where the um, the little top would go in and out, but they're in super good condition other than that. And as you can see, these are also listed on VAMP. So if you're watching this in the replay and it wasn't, they weren't claimed, they are there on VAMP for more money, but they're there. And as you can see, um, they are labeled Cock Rouge on the bottom. And I think that's, I don't know if the company maybe did that on purpose to mislead people, um, they do have Holt Howardish colors, but the orange isn't quite right. It's a little redder than it's supposed to be. Um, so clearly they were, I think this company was just kind of taking advantage of the fact that that Cock Rouge line became so popular. So cute little oil and vinegar, 5.5 inches tall, If anyone, 5.75 inches tall, if anyone is interested and in very good condition. 
super, super nice little ceramics. Gosh, and I should have mentioned at the beginning of that round, we have two rounds left before our recap. And then stick around because after the recap are three rounds of quick claims. Oh my God, I couldn't think of what we called them. <laughs> yeah, they're super fun. All right, so thank you for your bid, Kelly. I'm going to go ahead and start a countdown if anyone else is interested in these fun little these fun little cruets. Um, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. These are fun. And they do pair well with the whole they Howard. Do. Like the, the average person, if you put these in your whole Howard collection, wouldn't know that they're not. But okay. I, I mean, seriously, every single listing online says these are whole Howard. And it's just my gut was telling me they weren't. So Kelly, congratulations and thank you. They are yours for $32. All right, guys. Viewer discretion is advised for this next piece. But this is old. This is from the 1930s. It's something that I never find in this Tina found this, by the way, but we never find this in that good of condition. And seeing what it is, I think it's relevant and it, it's not that big of a deal, but it is feather art. Okay. So you don't often find these scenes that are made of feathers. Okay. Usually you find them that they're painted or they're done with um, shells or different things. This is a long handled tray. Okay. It is a wooden frame. So it is a wooden frame, but the handles are metal. It does say on the back that it was gifted to somebody in 1935, okay? So it does feel period correct. You can even see here, you can see that little dot there. That's a nail. So if you guys know the frames and things from the 1930s, you know that this is true to period. It has all its little feet on it, but it is some roosters, probably rooster fighting, and one has gone to his demise, Okay. Um, he, yeah, I know it, it's, it's a sad day for him, but, um, this is a unique piece for the time. It is a little tray that can be used. You could use this to carry cocktails on. You could put this up on the wall and have it in part of your gallery wall. And this is glass. So that is glass on top of that. And again, for you to find the detail that they actually made and painted and used feathers to make that. Usually when you find this, even if you find the curling art that they, you know, use like the wood shavings, it's usually disintegrated or falling apart. But I have to tell you for what it is, the details on it are in very, very good condition. I do also believe those are real feathers and it's feather art, something that you don't often see, you don't often find, and it is on this great tray. At $18, if you don't like what's in the tray, I'm sure you could very easily take the back apart you could use this for something else. So I could see this being used not only the way this is, but I do think that you could repurpose it if you wanted to. You know, if if this offends or bothers you, you could definitely put some calling cards in there. Dawn, thank you so much. I see you in at 18. Kelly is in at 20. You could take this apart with the nails. You could take the, I'm assuming it is part of the cardboard back. And you could use this to put pictures in. You could put Victorian calling cards. If you had another piece of art, you could probably put postcards, decoupage, something in there. So not only am I selling you this uh, for the feather art that is on the inside, but also the great wooden frame that could be repurposed. And these are metal handles on the side. So again, one more time, this measures, where the heck are my measurements? It measures just about 16 inches this way and about four and a half inches tall. And we can get an idea of the era of the piece because it was dated and gifted from Mr. and Mrs. And I think it's Wagner. I think it's Mr. and Mrs. Wagner. And I think it was something 50. And then it was August 23rd of 1935. So let's go ahead and start a countdown on this. A unique, fun piece of art. If you guys look up feather art, you don't find it that often. And if you do, it's completely uh, in disarray. Okay. Counting down from 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 
three, two, one, bid end, hand painting, then there's feathers. And I do believe the feathers are real. Uh, I don't think they're a synthet synthetic feather and it is from the 1930s. Again, it is just a unique, different piece, could be a background piece. Um, do whatever you want with it. There's the bid end. Thank you so much, Karen G. Dawn had a 23. Kelly came in with a just in case of 55. So congratulations, Kelly. It's yours for $24. Thank you so much, guys. All right, Bill. Jason, I have to compliment you on how well you have coordinated with my theme for the week. I tried. I so, had an idea that you were doing it, and this was the best that I could do. Let me just give you an insider's uh, viewpoint on what my theme next week is. I'm thinking home co horses and hot dogs, just so you know. <laughs> okay. All right, $15, and I have my last piece All of right. redware for the evening. I have this awesome, fairly large redware rooster. Oh, it's redware and roosters again. Redware rooster teapot. And I love this handle. I love this handle. It's so good. It does have quite a bit of patina on it. Um, it's been around the block, but that's why we love these old things. You can see there's a little bit of rusting on the inside. And uh, this is probably the piece tonight that has the most significant paint loss. You can see that on the feathers of the rooster, there are some areas of paint loss. Other than that, it's in gorgeous condition. Again, no chips or cracks. Um, just really, really nice. At one point, there was a little flower here on the back. We just see the five little petals. All of the other paint is gone. And this is the glaze. This is the darkest of the redware glazes. This is the one that almost looks black, which makes it interesting in a set if you collect redware, because while it all looks brown, it's all different shades of brown, almost all the way to black, um, which is super, super cool. Um, it's And again, it's in good condition. No chips or cracks, not even to the lid. Someone really took care of this piece. Um, it is 5.5 inches from side to side. And when the top is extended, it's eight full inches. Um, it does not stay upright on its own. You, If you wanted to display it, you would need to kind of prop it up. But uh, it's super, super cool. Bill, that metal handle alone is worth $15 because that doubles on a lot of biscuit jars that are missing them. And it doubles on a lot of other teapots that are missing them. Yeah, isn't it beautiful? It's just it a is. beautiful shape with these curves here. But I always love these little the hand. the, the handle that was meant to yep. so that you wouldn't burn yourself. Yep. Um, I, just I don't good. know why they get hot too, but. <laughs> they were trying. Anyway. All right, we're going to move along so we can get Jason's last item and to our recap. So you'll see this again in just a few minutes. Bill knows that I don't do well with themes, and somehow I feel like Bill slightly manipulated us to doing themes. I don't know. I'm just saying. Just remember, next week, hot dogs, Jason. Good luck. I'm thinking more home co. I'm oh, you know I can handle the hot dogs, no problem. So $10, guys. And if you guys know, you know. These are fun recipe boxes, and usually you never find these lacquered wooden boxes from the 60s and 70s in this good a condition. I have to tell you that this is like new. Like usually it's dried out, it's scuffed up, a lot of the decal is usually missing, but I felt with the brass and the roosters and all the 1960s, 70s, 80s fun, this would be great uh, to use and offer up tonight. So as you can see, the front's in very good condition. Here is your side, there are no chips. There's your back, there is the bottom. I would have believed that one time it had a Japan sticker on the bottom and there's the inside. Wait, hold on, wait for it. Does it say? No, it doesn't say Japan in there. It has numbers in there. So it's not full. So you'll have to fill this up with your recipes. And again, these make great risers. If you guys, you know, pop this into your decor, this goes well with the, um, the uh, I'm surprised you didn't big bring a piece of the Pyrex with the rooster on it, Bill. The brown rooster, that would have went with tonight's uh, theme. But again, this is higher quality. You can see how it is like dovetailed, inlaid right here. Um, again, these are decals that are on the front. They're not worn or chipped. A lot of times that is missing, uh, but it's just real fun. It has the copper pot on the front with a similar handle to Bill's. Then it has, I don't know, is that a fire starter? Didn't they use that to, I don't know, we'll pretend that's a syrup container. There's your uh, spoon for your cereal. 
and there's your pots and pans to make, I don't know, your macaroni and cheese in. So um, if you guys know, you know, if your kids or lived through the, you know, the 60s, 70s and 80s, almost somebody had this in their home. And I was just excited that uh, we were able to find one in such good condition. Measurements on it are four and a quarter inches tall. It measures about five and a half inches across. And then it's about three inches deep. And again, you can see that the wood is still in very good condition. It's not scuffed and it isn't discolored. So let's count it down. Donnie Girls in a 10. Thank you so much. On the retro, very late 60s, 1970s recipe box in wood. Very lacquered too. So looking for 11 or more. Counting down from 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bid end. Donnie's, Donnie Girl is still in at 10. So we're looking do for you 11. Do you see these themes that Amy's coming up with? Okay. I want us three to do ketchup, Christ, and Kitsch. Okay. That is we a great make, theme. I love it. We can make this happen. We can make Amy, this happen. Amy knows me. She's going after the condiments. I'm a condiment guy. <sighs> Yeah, don't sit down. If you sit down with Bill, make sure you get your ration of ketchup before he does. Donnie girl, it's yours for 10. Thank you so much. That is not kind, Jason. That is not kind. <laughs> oh, wait, it's recap time, isn't it's it? It's recap time, everyone. Yeah. Right, hang on. Hold on, everybody. There we go. There we go. All right. It's the exciting time where we get to bring back everything that wasn't claimed earlier. Uh, maybe you wanted some time to think about it. Maybe you weren't here. Um, and we have a good recap to, to do tonight. Um, so the way this is going to work is we're going to quickly show you what wasn't claimed earlier. And again, stick around because after the recap, we have three more rounds of items you haven't seen, which will be quick claims. But we're going to show you the item that wasn't claimed. We're going to tell you anything you need to know about it. We're going to say the price right up front because if you want to claim it, you want to get that price in there as soon as possible because we do move fairly quickly. Um, we're going to wait. Once we see a bid come in, if any bids come in, we'll wait a a little bit of time to see if any other bids come in. And if no other bids come in in a reasonable amount of time, we will do a direct uh, claim to the person who, who um, put the bid in. But if we do see another claim come in, we will start a countdown. So you may want to keep your finger handy in case you need to put another bid in there. Uh, Karen Gillette remains our bid ender during this period. And just in case remains active while we're doing the recap. So I have a few things, Jason. So we might want to bit bounce back and forth. That's fine. Um, so Go I'll ahead. do a few. I'll do my redware pieces. I took a chance with the redware tonight, everybody. I love it, but I know it's not everyone's thing. If anyone's interested in the pancake uh, set, it was twenty eight dollars. It had and they're they're in great condition, save that one little missing part of the glaze in the syrup, the batter pitcher, the syrup pitcher, and the butter pitcher. And the glaze is so good, you can't see that. The cold paint on it is so nice. So $28 pancake, if anyone is interested in that set, really fun set. For $16, I also had the gorgeous donkey pulling the cart with the salt and pepper jugs. Um, $16 donkey, if anyone was interested in that. For $9 each, I had two of those really fun, happy puppies, redware puppies. Um, so they were $9 each. You can write puppy nine. Um, let me know if you wanted one or two. And the final piece of redware I just showed, so I'll do it real briefly, $15 for the teapot, if anyone is interested in the teapot. Uh, and you can go ahead, Jason. All right. I used to take that little donkey and had that. I would take the shakers out at Christmas time and put bottle brush trees in there. It was really fun. Oh, that's fun. All right. Or eggs. Uh, eggs would fit nicely in there. Oh. It would, it would. And that usually that cart is missing. Usually yeah. you don't see that cart. So, all right. I had my piece of Victorian custard glass. Now the chip is right here on the base. But if you guys know, you know, there is a ring of fire that I didn't show you guys. If I tilt it, maybe you guys can just see the faint ring of fire. Again, this is a compote with that little chip. It is in the Greek key. Let me read my notes properly. It is in the Greek. It has a Greek key border, and it is it has beaded swung 
to it here with the detail on it. Now, I do believe that there would have been some gold paint on there, and I think it's long since gone. If you guys know custard glass, the $20 start on it is really, really good. You don't see it or find it that often. If you do, it's usually in a case at an antique mall. And that little chip, honestly, is nothing. Um, but it does fluoresce under black light. So it does have uranium, uranium in it. And this was in fashion in Victorian era, turn of the century. It has that yellowy custard style glow to it. So you can almost see like there was like almost some flint or ash that got trapped in there and it gave it like a slag effect. This would look so great with a little candle in it. This would look fun in your uh, black light, in your glowing glass collection. And let me just show you, Greek key is a real popular pattern. There you go. Hopefully you guys can see that Greek key effect. This would also make a great riser in your decor. If you needed a riser for something, you could probably also use it this way. But that was 20, just put custard if you're interested. And then I had my uh, as is, as found brass candles. I did not polish them. So the way they are is the way you'll get them. This is the larger set. It's $10 each. So if you're interested, you'd put $10 large. I do believe these are on the older side. They have a very deco kind of feel to them. They almost have like a Hollywood Regency kind of feel, but they do have patina. They have a really, really heavy weight to them. Like Kelly said earlier, brass is hot for this year. It's hotter than it's even been in the past. So $10, they are your large ones at nine inches tall. They're not Baldwin. I'm not sure who made them. And then I had the smaller set does have a heavier patina on them. But again, that could be a look you're going for if you were going to put these in a spooky kind of decor for Halloween. Um, brass all. All right, Kelly. That works. It's yours. You got it. Thank you so much, Kelly. That's it for me, Bill. The floor is yours, sir. Okay, so I had one rooster item left. I had that Taylor Smith & Taylor rooster coffee carafe, the break of day. This was $18 if anyone's interested in the rooster Sputnik. Um, $18 uh, carafe, you could write. Um, and from the rose uh, rounds, I had for $15 this beautiful Noritake uh, trinket dish with the gorgeous gold handles, Noritake Japan on the bottom. So you could write dish 15. Uh, I also had the beautiful trinket box, the hand painted one, hand painted in the Ozarks that has the little surprise on the inside with the hand painting uh, and the artist's name. Thank you, Karen. That carafe is yours. Um, so if you were interested in the, the box, you could write trinket box 15. And then for $20, the last item I had to recap is that gorgeous uh, Toll uh, Silent Butler um, that I'm going to uh, pair with this cute little little brush if anyone's interested. So you could write Butler 20 if you're interested in that. And that's all I had, Jason. Now it's time for the fun. It is. And thank you, Amy, so much. Again, if you guys see something that was not claimed, feel free to email myself or Bill, and we will gladly uh, offer it to you if it's still available. All right, Bill. So this is the portion of our sale where we do a couple rounds of quick claims. And what that means is it works a little bit differently than the regular part of the sale. In, th in this case, we will show you an item, but we will not tell you the start price until we've described it. We're going to describe the item. It might be a choice of items. And after we describe the item, we will tell you the price. However, unlike the regular part of the sale where you type the price in, you do not type the price in. After we tell you what the price is, we will give you a letter from the alphabet. We'll show you a Scrabble tile, or at least I will, with a letter from the alphabet. So will Jason. Um, and uh, the first person to type the letter in correctly. That's all you need to do. You don't need to type the item's name. You don't need to type the price. You just need to type the item's letter correctly claims the item. If it's a choice round, you have first choice. If you don't take all the items in the choice round, it goes to the second person who typed in the letter X. And it's as simple as that. So I'll start out with a real simple one. I always try to, to do a simple one. I have, um, I, have a, I have two of these beautiful rose glasses. Now, 
there's a lot of controversy about these very simple glasses, about who made them. Um, uh, people say it's federal, Anchor Hawking, Hazel Atlas. Some people call them uh, the, um, oh, what are they called? It's escaping my mind right now. The Swanky Peanut Swings. Butter. Peanut butter. No, that's what they are. They're sour cream and peanut butter glasses, but people call them the Swanky Swigs. But they're in this gorgeous rose pattern. I have two of them and they are in great condition. The uh, decal on them is, is not worn off. There are lots of different flowers that these come in. Look how great that is. It's really, yeah. really beautiful. Um, I have two and they are, let me just tell you the size. They are, uh, they are, I didn't measure them. They are five inches tall and they are going to be $6 each if anyone is interested. So I have two. If anyone is interested, the first person to type the letter G can claim one or both if anyone's interested. All right, guys. I have jewelry. I have jewelry, and the, they're all they're all gold metal jewelry, okay? And they're all in very good condition. So your first one that you can choose from is the cute little kitty cat here. It has some rhinestone eyes. No gold is worn. These are actually very heavy in weight, you know, for the most part for costume jewelry. So that is the first choice. And this one is uh, one inch, one inch. So if you guys love kitty cats, that would be your first choice. The second one has like a Spanish feel to me. If you guys are familiar with Spanish style jewelry here, this is a little mousy mouse. And you can see they actually etched on his back and that's like a little dove and a little daisy flower. So hopefully you guys can see, there you go. You can see the little mouse's face on there. There you go. Hold him that way. You can see his big ears and whiskers. And then there is the back of that one. This one's a little lighter. And then, or you could actually maybe attach him to a brooch if you wanted to. And I mean, attach him to a chain and wear him as a brooch. He's about an inch and a half. So he'll be your second choice. I was holding it upside down there. Then your third choice is going to be, this one's really fun. You have, and they're not signed by anybody. So I'm not sure who the manufacturers are. You have this frog on a lily pad. That's enameled with the rhinestone eyes. Again, this one is not signed and it is about an inch. So they're all about an inch to an inch and a half. So you will pick either frog, that will be, or you'll pick mouse, or you will pick cat. They will only be $10 each, $10 each. And the first person who puts in the letter then after you put the letter, then I'll ask you which one you want, and then you'll claim it by either frog, mouse, or cat. So the first person that wants one, two, or three of these at $10 each and puts in the letter S, I'm holding it backwards, the letter S, you can have whichever ones you want, and then you can tell me if you want cat, mouse, or frog. Again, these are really fun uh, pins, maybe 70s, maybe 80s. So the first one is Philomena. So you get first choice Philomena. So you just need to let me know, did you want the frog one? Did you want the mouse one? The mouse is really detailed. The camera's not doing that justice. That's very Spanish style. If you guys are familiar with Spanish jewelry or the little Meow Meow cat. So Philomena, you got first choice at 10. You just have to let me know which ones you want. They're $10 each. And then Shira is next. Thank you so much. So you'll have next. And then Karen, you'll be the third backup. And then add to cart to follow. So just waiting to hear from Philomena. You want the cat, please? All right. The cat is yours. Thank you so much. Let me write you down. Yes, absolutely. You let me know who you want it sent to. We can definitely do that. Let me just write that down. So, Shira, you have choice on either the frog or the mouse. Sorry, and I'm holding over the tail there. So you do have a tail on the mouse. So one of those could be yours. Frog. All right. So let me get that. So then we're back to Karen. It could be. No, wait. So, all right. So you wanted the frog. So, Karen, let me know. Maybe you want a little mousy mouse to run around with the kitty cat. Pass. So okay. add to cart. All right, and add to cart, let me know, and I can pass it over to Bill. Add to cart, you could have the mouse for 10 if you're interested. All right. Okay, my next uh, quick claim round, I mentioned earlier that I had some more Holt Howard from the Cock Rouge line. I have the salt and pepper shakers. 
Um, but actually, I don't just have one set. I have two. So there are two possible sets if people are interested to claim. And they are different. They're both in great condition. I don't have any condition issues to report. But Holt Howard made these in two different runs. The original run was in 1960. Um, and on the original run, you can see that the chests of the roosters have S and P written on them. Uh, the beaks often get broken on these. As you can see, they're in good condition. They have their stoppers. One has a barely anything left of a sticker, but these are the OG. These are the 1960 Holt Howard Red Rooster Salt and Pepper Shakers. They have the S and P written on them. Four years later, because this was so popular, Holt Howard made them again. Um, and the differences here are that the S and P do not appear on the chest and they put a glaze on it. The first set are matte, the second set are glazed. These do have the Holt Howard stickers on the bottom of both and their original rubber stoppers. It doesn't look like anyone ever used them for salt and pepper because the stickers are right over those stoppers. So this is what, this is what you're bidding on. Um, choice of sets of Holt Howard, Red Rooster, Cock Rouge, salt and pepper shakers in very, very good condition. Um, they will be $26 a set. If anyone's interested, you can type the letter F. And if you are interested afterwards, you can tell me which set you want. If anyone's interested, $26, the letter F. All right, guys. So I was going to offer these as choice earlier on. All right, steals the first one in. Okay, D, let me know. Would you like 1960? They're the older ones with the S and the P or the 1964. You can tell the difference between the sort of uh, bisque glaze and, the, and the, the high gloss glaze. So there's 1960 or 1964. I feel like I need to go see which ones I have now. And then John, your backup. And then Kelly after that. You want the 1964. So those go to Steel Whisper. John, let me know if you wanted the 1960 set. This is what they look like. And if not, Kelly, you are on deck and I can just watch, watch the comments. I'm sorry, Karen, to test your willpower. I'll just watch the comments. All right, so let me get it back up here. So it says, quick claim. Thank you, Johnny. All right, so guys, I was gonna offer these as choice, but then when I was writing my things up, I knocked one down and damaged his foot. So one has a foot repair. So these are really special. It's very difficult, at least in where I come from, to find bisque left in figurines that are from Japan. So you're gonna get the whole little set of mice. I'm just gonna sell them for what I paid for them because I did damage his little footsie. So you can see it didn't even go back together all that well because there's a little sliver missing. But I did glue it back together. So you'll get the whole little trio of mice. Outside of the damage I did to this little fella, they're in very good condition. So they measure about three inches tall. So you get Mr. Mouse eating his cheese, and you can see it does say left in Japan on there. So you're going to get him. I don't think he wanted to be broke up from his buddy. So I got a feeling that's why he... He put himself in harm's way and they'll stay together. So you have little Mousy here. He's spilling the beans. I think the beans are falling out of his little pot there. So you're going to get him. He has his left in sticker, but it's a little faded. And then you're going to get other little Mousy. Now he's got the little like pink, pink little britches on there. And he's got himself a little book. Cute little mice. So you're going to get all three of them. They're going to be $15. That's what I paid for them. So you'll get them all for $15. And the first person who puts in the letter, if I can get my letter, first person who puts in the letter M for mouse can have the little gang, the little trio of mice. They're really cute. And you don't often find the bisque ones that are made in Japan. So if you're interested in all three mice for 15 bucks, that makes them $5 each. Just put in the letter M and they could be yours. So add to cart, you are the first person I see. Thank you so much. I know, Amy, I thought they were really neat. So add to cart, thank you for adopting my mice that I damaged. So you're staying together, guys. All right, thank you. Okay, for my last quick claim round, um, I have some uh, three different choices of really pretty rose theme serving 
serving ware, uh, older porcelain. So the first piece I have is a luster ware uh, piece, black handled, the, that orangish peach colored luster that we expect with a beautiful basket of roses and other flowers in the middle. As you can see with a lot of this luster ware, there is some pitting, just know that that's there, but it is beautiful nonetheless. And it's a small plate, great for a little party, 1.25 inches tall, 7.5 inches across, no manufacturer, just the gorgeous made in Japan with that flower. So the luster ware piece is the first choice. The second choice is this Noritake, really pretty Noritake floral, rose floral bowl in the gold and green color, which I always think looks so good together. No condition issues with this. A great Noritake stamp on the back. Um, and this is a bigger serving piece. This could hold, you know, whatever you want in a, in a party. It's got, it's got a lot of space in it. This piece is... Um, this piece is 2.5 inches tall, 10.5 inches from side to side. And then the last piece is a larger plate, unmarked, um, with this gorgeous, it's got the two handles on it, beautiful green color with these great roses on it. Um, so super, super pretty rose serving pieces, if anyone's interested. Just giving you an idea of the size difference. The large plate's 9.75 inches tall. So just some really fun things to add to your collection. If anyone's interested, they will be $10 each. Um, and if anyone's interested, you could type the letter K. That's a mashed potato. Each. That's a I mashed know. potato. That's what I think for it too. Yeah. It is a mashed potato bowl. It's a mashed potato boat. That's what it, it is. is. Amy said the same thing. That's yep. scary. Because we all think <laughs> the same. Because we always have potatoes on the brain, the three of us. Oh my gosh. All right. All right. Just waiting a minute for that lag. All right. So I can't do quick claims or sale with Bill. I try to bring planters. So this one, I don't often see this one that often. This one is Royal Copley. Yes, you see the sculpt, but this one has the transfer applied or decal have you. Of course, it's under the glaze. It has all those gorgeous you know, flowers, that rose in the middle. And then um, it is stamped on the bottom, Royal Copley. Very good condition, very clean on the inside. I love the, the flowering down here, double handled, no issues, no chips. So that'll be your first choice. I love this one. This one's made in Taiwan. Bill, have you ever heard of the good company? I don't know. Were they like a teleflora or something maybe? I never heard of the company. But yeah, they probably were. Right. No, I haven't. It's made in Taiwan, but my God, you have this fun little bonnet baby and she's about to get goosed by the goose, okay? No major issues. I feel like there's a little bit of paint missing right there above her daisy. You can see a little white speck. She's holding the daisy. I thought this is great for spring. The fence post, one or two of them seem to have a little bit of roughness, but it's not a chip, okay? But this is a flat back like Bill normally would say. Plus, it's a picket fence all the way around. And you guys could really pop a bottle brush tree in there, maybe use it for your Easter decor. But this will be your second choice made in Taiwan. I know that goose is like, meh, meh, going to get her. Better run, girl. He's going to get you. So $10 choice. They're going to be $10 choice. You can either pick the Royal Copley one or the Bonnet Planter. Oh, the Royal Copley is six and a quarter inches tall. The planter is five inches wide. So $10 choice. First person who puts in the letter E, you can claim one or two. You can claim one or two. I think this one's really fun. I know folks collect bonnet baby kind of things and stuff. I thought that would be a fun addition. Maybe you know someone that's expecting a little girl. That would make a good gift for there or the Royal Copley. I love that, especially if you use that next year's Easter decor. So $10, just put in the letter E, and you can have the little planter with the bonnet girl on it. Gosh, that's fun. And look at that little daisy in her hand. So all right, I'm not seeing any interest. That is okay. Jason, and I forgot to bring I forgot to bring one thing back to the recap because it was on the floor. floor. I'm just gonna show it real quickly. $30 if anyone was interested in that gorgeous framed uh painting of the roses. $30. Um, I just wanted to make sure I didn't I was hoping if in case someone was waiting for it to come back. All right, so that's gonna do it for us, guys. We did it, we got all the way through. And again, if there's anything that wasn't claimed in the quick claims or came back for the recap, 
please feel free to email myself or Bill. Our emails are right below us. We know a lot of folks watch this on the replay, so feel free to email us and we will make um, arrangements to get you invoiced and shipped out. So Karen G, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being our official mod and bid ender tonight. We could not do it without you. Please make sure you're following her other half, her husband, Grady Grupo Vintage Recordings. He has a really fun YouTube channel here playing music. It could be your YouTube DJ if you just checked him out. So uh, we're going to quickly tell you where we're going to be at next because we don't want to lose you. We want you to come back and hang out with us. So, Bill, what do you have in store for everybody? Well, real quickly, as I said at the beginning, if you love Tupperware, if you love to look at it, if you love to buy it, if you want to add some to your collection, 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on Instagram, join myself and Steph at Crazy for Kitsch Vintage for our third all Tupperware sale. We have it all. Um, and if you do have a piece you're looking for, message me beforehand because we both have so much we can't bring everything that we have. So if you are looking for something, send us a message. Uh, and then on Friday, I'll be back with the crazy guy here um, for the Valentino's uh, YouTube sale. Yeah, here on Mother Tucker's. I had to think if we were on YouTube or Instagram. Eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time here on YouTube. We are doing a vintage variety sale. That's myself, Jason, John, who's in the chat at Everyday Holiday Displays, and our friend Brian at Mid-Century Mister. We bring the good stuff. So that'll be eight o'clock Friday night. I got some interesting, I got some interesting things in store for Friday. So if you guys love, if you guys love different, I have it. Bill knows one of the things that I have, and I was able to actually oh, yeah. fix it and clean it since you saw it when I picked it up. So yeah, I'm excited to um, see how people react to that. that I hope they do. I did some research on that. Those suckers are hard to find. So make sure you're following all of us you'll be clued into what's going on and make sure you're subscribed to Bill because he's going to be probably putting out a haul video of everything he purchased while Amy was in town. So uh, make sure to, to watch for that. Uh, this Wednesday, one year anniversary for Fantastic Finds, myself and Enamor Amy. We have a big, big, big sale in store for you. We stepped up our game with a little bit of more kitsch. She has a great piece of loose site that's coming. Um, so please make sure you're subscribed to her. But Come on back here Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. We have an epic giveaway, okay? We are going to share a photo of it. You don't have to purchase to win it. You just need to be here for when we offer it. So please come hang out with us. Everything gets started at 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, again, it's a pretty doggone big box, and it has Mama Pam's cookies in it. So uh, it's going to be fun. we got some really good stuff in the giveaway. And then stick around for after the sale. We're going to do some community fantastic finds where we turn the channel over to you. We show whatever you deem to be a fantastic find. So then on Thursday, head on over to the VAMP, uh, the virtual antique marketplace. Tina's going to have another buyer's choice. Then we're going to play it out, uh, feel it out. She might do a normal sale the following week. So let us know what you like. If you like the buyer's choice, we'll keep doing them. If not, she might try that. And she might even try some theme sales. So please make sure you head on over to Vamp, become a registered buyer. It's very easy. It's very safe. And then, of course, Bill um, told you guys about Friday. So uh, again, guys, this month is National Donate Month. So please consider becoming an organ donor. Um, it is kind of your way of paying it paying it forward to folks that are here on this planet that are sick and ailing of things that can only be fixed by an organ transplant. So it's very easy. All you have to do is next time you renew your driver's license, just say yes. You can even do it beforehand. And there's other websites. Merely Google it. Again, uh, if you are an organ donor, thank you so very much. If you could, please maybe ask somebody to be an organ donor. Um, and again, we just want to remind you guys that we appreciate all of you. Uh, we know there's a lot of other places you guys could be and scenes that you hang out with us and enjoy our vintage. That means a lot to us. So, um, and again, thank you so much, Karen G. That's going to do it for us tonight. I'll see you back here uh, Wednesday night, 8 p.m. with Amy of Enamor. Amy, please give her a subscription as well. Let's get these numbers up. It's getting a little hard to get subscribed.